This right here ain't for Edom. A Moabah Ammon, this here for the family. Yeah, and we want it all. See Babylon fall. To rule over dogs. See all of them crawl. And acknowledge we the chosen and tell it like Moses when he appear with the Torah. Sport the book like Dora, mountaintop like a horror. Go. I ain't this crazy, so let's see your body. You know we gon' get it. And we in the streets to gather the sheep. You can say that we fishing. But God got intention. And he got a mission. To destroy all the millions. And son of perdition. Hunt us. Get them. Run us. Spread The anger of Christ will quench If you are the dice, you finish. We hunt us. Get them. Run us, spring. The anger of Christ will quench you. If Bob the hunters can fish you. Yeah. Hold up. Uh. Real Jew, get up out my face, man. Watch what you say, yeah, them bruise don't play. Pull a scripture, cut a demon, put a heater in his place, but a fix your face. Cause we run it through Christ receives we atonement. For them 12 tribes, yes, yeah, our time ain't no escaping this judgment. See, Esau getting double. Match that, turn his ass into stumble. See Jacob a fire and Joseph a flame, and he'll be devoured. Now, what shall remain? Half of the Lord has spoken. Yeah, you know we coming back for his chosen. Yeah, so come out, my people, so that we shall reign and be not partakers, or you'll reap the same. Ah! See, we them people scattered all across the nations. Last Trump, we uncorrupt, yeah, check the message. Black Messiah, King of King, it ain't no question. Straight from Basra, die garments in his fury, taking vengeance. So we reigning back to back to back to black to back to fact that Christ is black. Yeah, that's a fact. The kingdom back and shout out a dog over tongue against his people while we're ruling. Yeah, you know it ain't no stopping that. Ooh. Scripts like fire, they lethal. Yeah, pair of slaughter for his people. Yeah, put the wings off an eagle. And all these other nations gon' bow when the Lord put an end to his kingdom like fire. I need the spirit celestial body, you know we gon' get it. And we in the streets to gather the sheep, we can say that we fishing. This. But God got a tits, and he got a mission to destroy all the minions. And the son of perdition, hunt us, get him, run us, spread it. The anger of Christ, we quench it. If you run a dice, you finish. Hunt us, get him, run us, spread it. The anger of Christ, we quench it. Evolve to hunt us from bitches. Huh. Bishop on deck. Hiring Christ bless Israel. Shalom. Salute down. Face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Holy Father, God of heaven, the creation of the universe, have mercy, have compassion towards us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For bringing us back to your Sabbath, for, for putting your fear within us, Lord, to gather the 12 tribe of the house of Israel, we giving you praise and honor for that. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we also pray for those that are sick. Heal them quickly and speedily, Father. Then we also pray that, Lord, we also pray that, Lord, you bless these brothers, these, these brothers that go out throughout the four corners and preach this gospel. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we also pray for our sisters, Lord, that may stay in the spirit. We also pray for our son and our daughter, Lord. Strengthen them to your Lord's statutes and commitment. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Father, we also pray that, Lord, you, you send your angels 
to walk with us, to guide us. This is the war of time, the war of days, the trouble time. Father, send your angels in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Our Father, which is in heaven, honor be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our sin. Forgive other sins against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from all evil. The kingdom and the power and the glory in the forever, Lord. Father, we also pray that, Lord, we're going to make the special request. Father, you destroy all those that have the sky us throughout the four corners of the earth. Those that had oppressing us. Those who trying to stop this mission from going, Lord. Destroy them all so they may never wise it in. These heathen, these filthy heathen, Lord. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, let the whole congregation say hallelujah. 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 And, and your son, name, Father, we also thank you for the food and the drink. In Christ we pray, we ask, Amen. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, and salute. Most high Christ bless. Salute. Pam, face sisters. To the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Most high Christ bless. You short lava, you short. Oh. Okay. Let me be quiet. Hey, shalom, 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 shalom. What's going we on here, man? What's building. going on here, man? I got to sell some energies. Come on, man. We in a building. We in this building. You got to show some energies up in here. What's wrong with y'all? That's what I'm talking During the whole week, man, they've been oppressing us. Today's our day. Let us shine. Let us shine, brothers. Clap your hand That's for yourself, right. man. Come on, man. <laughs> All right. All praise to the most high, man, giving us the opportunity, man, that I, we pray that he put that spirit on Bishop to bring the right things that we need, the right medicine that we need. We can heal. That's what these words are doing, man. It's going to heal our people so our mind can be right, you know? Bishop, whenever you're ready, sir. Okay. Uh, Captain Zaf, use this one. Yep. Yeah, so. Send it to them. Put up on the screen. Yeah, man, shout out to the, uh, the, the, the teachers that there was way before Bishop. I think there was uh, Captain Shemai. Captain Shemai. Shemai. Then you got uh, Deacon Malachi. Yes. Then you have... Uh, uh, Deacon Abiyah. No, I forget his name. Oh, what, what's his name? Abiyah. Oh, Abiyah. Abiyah. I'm, yeah. I'm just messing with him. I'm just messing with him. Deacon oh. Abiyah, man. Big up. Good class, brothers. Oh, oh yes, yes, sir. Big you up. I'm just messing with him. That's right. Hey, Deacon Lava, you forgot his name. Yeah, because, yeah, because he do not really teach much on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, that's why. Oh, yeah, that's, that's why. So, that's why. You, so know that. you know, you forgot yeah. his name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he trying to bring his uh, yeah, he trying to put his name back in the map. Something's going stuff. on over there now. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. We gotta find out what's good, going on. Some uh, because some congregation, man, they just hold so many hatred, man. So Damn. many gossip, so many all these things. I'm hoping that for your brothers who back in New York, that class was for y'all, man. We just get back from being gossiper. This class was for y'all, man. You know what I mean? For us, man, like Deacon said earlier, not just for for us, so we can do better and get better. All right? Go ahead, Bishop. All oh, praise, all oh, praise. How you sisters doing this Sabbath day? Yes. All praises, brothers. How y'all doing? Good. All oh, praise. Who's reading for me today? This is Jalil Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's, well, I'll try Jalil. Well, all praises. Thank you, Officer Jolly. Yes, I appreciate you. <laughs> you oh, we yes, in sir. this building. That's right. All right. <laughs> Bishop, you yes, see how we do it? We tell you we got two readers for you in New Who's York. the second reader? The, Tobias. Oh, Tobias, you know how to read? <laughs> we got two for you, just in case one okay, pop, you okay. know what I mean? Well, Jalo, when you get tired, yeah. we're going to pass it to Big Chunky. That's Big Chunky right there. See how he do. <laughs> All right, we're going to open up with some history books. Um, first book, let's put it up on the screen. Hey, first, put the uh, thumbnail on the screen so we know what today's class is. Now, today's class is from the river to the sea. Our people will be free. Now, 
if y'all took notes from last week, today's going to be a little bit of a continuation from last week. I'm going to see if Captain Joel Salah was defeated at by the end of last week's class. I got disheartened with the amount of dumb answers I got. So he's so Captain Yan says New York is a thousand times st well studied. That's so right. We gonna see. Let me take. That's, that's right. not New York. <laughs> this is not New York here. Where does New York start at? Where's New York? Raise your hand, New York. All right. Yeah. So it starts at Jordan and all the way back. A lot of them. Oh, that's the excuse you're gonna come with now. All right, who are the officers in New York? Raise your hand, officers. Officers in New York. Only three? Y'all only, wait, three, four, five, six. Y'all only got six officers here? Okay. So out of those six are the six I'm going to call on. All right. All right, so let's open up. Let's open up. All right, I had to get it right. I think I'm okay now. Officer Jala, where are we? You didn't call the scripture yet, Bishop. Jalil, I said there's a book we're going to read. Bring it out. Didn't I say this? Yep, yep, yep. I said, I know I'm getting old, but I ain't getting crazy. Not yet. Okay. History in black. African Americans in Search of an Ancient Past, written by Yakov Shavit. All right, let's go inside the book. There is yet another dilemma posed by sacred biblical tradition to the black Americans. New image of sacred history. The image of Jesus. The new historical version portrays Jesus of Nazareth as a black Israelite from Galilee. That's Ga right. Mm -hmm. From Galilee. That's right. That's right. Therefore, it is only logical to assume that the Sanhedrin, mm -hmm. the Jewish supreme political, religious, and judicial court during the Roman period until its abolishment, circa 425, uh, 25th AD, in Jerusalem was also black. Yes, it was. If so, is it not conceivable that the court which tried and condemned Jesus was a black court? Yep. Mm-hmm. Are black Jews in Jerusalem responsible for the Savior's crucifixion? Yes, sir. And what about Judas Iscariot? He was black too. I was a nigger. I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> what, was he also black or was he white-skinned? No, Pilate was white. Pilate and Herod were the only Edomites there. Go ahead. Albert B. Kleeg's solution to this dilemma is that Jesus, darkest love Jesus, was a black Jewish revolutionary zealot who waged war against the white Romans world order. That, that is That's correct. That's right. Who waged war against the white Romans world order. 100% correct. Go ahead. While black, while black scribes and black Pharisees collaborated with the white oppressor. Just like they do today, these black religious leaders. Go ahead. In order to preserve their political and social privileges. Uh-huh. To Klieg, the historical Jesus was a flesh and blood black man, like his judges on the Sanhedrin, who were also black hey, Jews. Right, correct. Give me that in John uh, 17. You know what I want, Jello? Uh, uh, not John 17, I apologize. John 11, thank you, thank you, John 11. John chapter 11, verse 47. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. Mm -hmm. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. They had their allegiance to the Roman Empire. The black Sanhedrin had their allegiance to the Roman Empire. Empire, just like the black Christian church today has their allegiance to America, which is an extension of Rome. We're going to touch on that today, too. Give me the next book. The critical review. Now, I often cover secondary sources. Secondary sources does not count out uh, or go above the primary source, which is what, brothers? The Bible. The Bible. Correct. 
right. The Critical Review or Annals of Literature by a Society of Gentlemen, volume the, volume the fir- 57. Mm-hmm. Let's go inside the book. Zoom in. Okay. Pope Nicholas V, in that famous bull by which he granted the unknown world to the Christians to reduce all infidels into slavery. Wait, and wait, wait, read it again. Pope Nicholas V, in that famous bull by which he granted the unknown world to the Portuguese and Spaniards. Right, go ahead. Expressly permitted and ordered the Christians to reduce all infidels into slavery. To reduce all unbelievers into slavery. Go ahead. An order zealously executed by both their nations. Both these nations. Wait, wait, wait. So that's where the transatlantic slave trade began. The Roman Catholic Church, Christians initiated it. They started it. Raise it up. Okay. Professor Springle devised the history of the Negro trade carried on by Christians into two principal periods. The first from 1443 to 1645. The second from 1645 to the present times. The first period is the time of its increase, during which not only its founders, the Portuguese, but the English. So these are all the nations involved in it. Go ahead. The English, the Dutch, and the French dealt in Negro slaves, Mm -hmm. though chiefly for the for the the use and consumption of the Spaniards Mm -hmm. and the sugar and tobacco plantations in Brazil. Mm -hmm. During the latter period, what's that word? These These. four nations were obliged obliged. to share that trade with the Swedes. Next page, top. The Danes and Brandenburgers, Brandenburgers. Mm -hmm. the North Americans, and since 1778 with the Spaniards. All right, let's go down. Right here, the discovery of the gold. The discovery of the Gold Coast served indeed yet more to enlarge the sphere of the navigation of the Portuguese than their slave trade. But it forced them also to extend themselves to the coast and to, f- to settle colonies in Congo, Angola, and other places, which they had till then neglected. Prince Henry's colonies were enlarged by his successors. King John II, in 1492, Expel all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas. Island of St. Thomas is in Africa, right? Which had been discovered in 1471. And to other Portuguese settlements <laughs> on the continent of Africa. Watch this. And from the banished Jews. And from these, these. And from these banished Jews. The black Portuguese, as they are called. You see that? So they knew who they were banishing. They knew who was going into slavery, right? And the Jews in Loango. That's in Africa. Who were despised? Who were despised even by the very Negroes, our descendants. Right. So we came from one stock, but they knew that some of the blacks did not like the Jews that kept the commandments. Those blacks that kept God's laws. I think that's all I want. What I so what I want y'all to see is that the scholars know the blacks that were banished out of Spain and Portugal were Jews. Okay. That's what the scholars know. Those that went into slavery were Jews. That's what the scholars know. Let's go to the next. Is there a next page? Give me the next page. Zoom in. Which led. You want to start from which? Oh. Uh, I can start about it. The Loango family. Uh, Loango family. Right there. The top. Loang- Loango family. The inhabitants of Loango did not differ materially from those of Gabun and Cape Lopez. Lopez. It is probable that the Jewish type of character above mentioned forms a larger element of population here than it does in the Pongo coast. And this, and this, and this it was doubtless which led the Roman Catholic missionaries who labored here during the 16th and 17th centuries to the conclusion that they had found black Jews in Loango. So this is more proof. These are old books that they know these black Jews were all throughout Africa. That's Go right. Ahead. Jump down to Barbo. Barbet states that in the reign of, of Don John II, 
in about the close of the 15th century, large numbers of Jews were expelled from Portugal and taken to the coast of southern Guinea. They know that in Guinea, they put Jews there. Go ahead. That the island of St. Thomas, which is not more than 100 miles from the mainland, was populated by mulattoes descended from the Jewish exile and Anglo women. Mm -hmm. uh, jump down to the very bottom, that line right there. Instead of regarding them as a pure African family of Jews. Mm -hmm. Go down. It is important to remark, however, that those family in, in Africa cannot be fairly estimated by such specimens of the nations as have been brought to America. They know a lot of us brought to America. They said those are Jews. Go ahead. For the subjects of the slave trade. Mm -hmm. Give me the next book. Tony Martin, the, the Jewish onslaught. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever heard of Tony Martin. He was a professor at a, at a prestigious university. Let's go to the back of the book. Can you zoom in? That's him at the top. Can you zoom in? Okay, read that. Okay, it says Black Studies, Black Jewish Relations. The Jewish onslaught dispatches from the Wellesley battlefront. The Jewish attack on black progress reached Wellesley College in 1993. When more Jewish organizations than you could, sh could shake a stick at yeah. issued a call for the dismissal of Dr. Tony Martin from his tenured professorship at the Elite Women's College. So when you have a tenure as a professor, you're not supposed to be able to be terminated, fired at all. But Amalek found a way to get rid of his tenure and got him terminated for this book. Go ahead. Martin, one of the school's most senior, best known, and most widely published scholars, suddenly found himself the target of a hysterical campaign of Jewish lies. So what we're going to find out is that what he went through in the 90s we going we find out it's happening now with Canary Mission. He's explaining in this book how it's going to grow. And this is from 93. It has grown. We have most black people have ignored it. Now we said, hey, you better take a look. This brother wrote this thing years ago, decades ago. Let's go inside the book for time's sake. Thank you. Page Zoom six. Black, black solidarity. When black people don't even know what that word means. You today, nigga! Look it up. <laughs> The, okay. so, the solidarity and support of the African-American population has been very gratifying. If out of evil cometh good, then the Jewish onslaught has had its unintended good results. Defense against Jewish extremism has been brought together, has brought together nationalists and socialists, middle and working classes, faculty and students. Mm -hmm. What also adds up is these powerful Jewish groups desire to censor education. I've seen it now. They said, get rid of the 60. They're behind all of that. People go arguing over Republicans and Democrats. No, it's not them. Who's funding? Who are the lobbyists behind the Democrats and the Republicans? These people, Amalek. Read. They already control Congress through APAC. That's what I'm telling you. Read that whole part again. What also adds up is these powerful Jewish groups desire to censor education. They already control Congress through the APOC, American Israel Public Affairs Committee, seeing to it that no c congressman su survives who votes against Israeli interests. A brother said to me, why don't we do a campaign against uh, Democrats? I'm like, no. That's just two heads of the same, two horns of the same dragon, but behind the scenes, is Amalek. Everybody understand that? They're the ones funding both parties, both groups. So whoever wins, they win. Y'all understand how the game is played? Yes, Next page. Lobbyist. Right, the lobbyists, thank you. Since there is hardly an African-American individual or organization left who has not been labeled anti-Semitic by Jews and their two or three black surrogates, the logic of the ADL position becomes clear. In all its dangerous paranoia, the entire African-American population has now become fair game to have their post office boxes accessed, their Department of Motor Vehicles information divulged, and confidential police files shared with the ADL. That's the Anti-Defamation League. That's Amalek. Go ahead. 
The fact that the ADL boasts of its influence on legislatures, example, the passage of hate crime legislation modeled on ADL drafts and on their training of police departments, only compounds. They're behind, you saw that big campus in Atlanta? That big campus with the police. They got a new okay. facility. Yeah, they They're behind this. These are the same people. That's why God said, I will war with Amalek from what, brothers? Generation to generation. That's right. right? The fact that the ADO most of its influence on legislatures are the passage of hate crime legislation modeled on ADL drafts and on their training of police departments only compounds the problem. For if the ADL and its fellow Jewish organizations have been or will be able to communicate to such influential bodies their paranoid and hateful conception of hate crimes and bigotry, then the fallout could be grim indeed. Mm -hmm. See the paranoia, they're paranoid, go ahead. In a worst case scenario, a Jewish McCarthy might arise who would deprive of who, a livelihood. Who would deprive of a livelihood or worse, an academic. Any academic. Any academic who believes that Jews played on an important role in African slavery, which they most assuredly did. They did play a huge role. There's many books that bring this out. Next page. Zoom in on that section. The Wellesley's and Jeffrey's cases coincided with amazing revelations concerning Joel Springarns, spying on the NAACP. Hey, look at the top part. See that first sentence up there? I was, I was read that. I was similarly above I, that, right there. I, I, was, was, I was similarly accused of targeting Jews for showing that they were involved in the African slave trade. Once you point out little things, not even little, or big things like that, that they were part of it, you are a target. I hope you understand that. You are not allowed to That's speak right. or criticize Amalek. Go ahead, read on. The Wellesley's and Jeffrey's cases coincided with amazing revelations concerning Joel Springarns spying on the NAACP. Y'all see that? Joel Springarns spying on the NAACP. Go ahead. Springarn was one of the several prominent Jews among the NAACP's white liberal pioneers. For almost 30 years from... from 1910, 1910, he played more leadership roles in the association, serving as both chairman of the board and president. The NAACP got its first African-American president in 1975. So the, un the NAACP had nothing to do up with black people. They put that name up there, but it was all Amalek. Then they allowed one Negro on the board in 1975. You can't make this stuff up. Go to the next page. Marcus, Marcus Garvey lived up to his reputation as a prophet when, in 1928, he called the white NAACP leadership spies for the rest of the white race. That's right. He earlier said of Springarn and the others, the greatest enemies of the Negro race are among those who hypocritically profess, profess love and fellowship for him, when in truth and deep down in their hearts, they despise and hate him. I see that? That's what God says, too. Go ahead. Suedo philanthropists, Pseudo. Pseudo philanthropists and their organizations are killing the Negro. White men and women of the Moorfield story, Joel Springarn, Julius Rosenwald, Oswald Garrison Villard, Congressman Dyer, and Mary White Ovington type are disarming, disvisioning, disambitioning, and fooling the Negro to death. So they got certain key white people that can smile at black folks and make them believe anything they say. Go ahead. They teach the Negro to look at the whites in a false direction. At the same time, distracting the Negro from the real solution and objective of securing nationalism. Right. You don't need reparations. What you need is a job. That's all you need. Go down next page. But whatever the period... Slave, liberal, or conservative, the, con the constant has been a Jewish insistence on the right to monitor the activities of African Americans. They always want to monitor us. Go ahead. Slavery was the ultimate monitoring device. That's the best way to monitor when they had us in slavery. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Without freedom of movement, expression, or anything else, and subject to a perpetual curfew. The slave spent his whole life under the fixed scrutiny of the slave master. In the age of liber liberalism, 
Scrutiny was exercised by those who founded, led, and funded the, the assimilationist black or organizations from Joel Springarn. Next page. Come on, y'all. Using, using his perch as president of the NAACP Go ahead. to spy for military intelligence. Y'all see that? Go ahead. To Stanley Levison drafting Martin Luther King Jr.'s speeches. Y'all thought that I Had a Dream was written by Martin Luther King. It was not. It was written by Amalek. Mm. Read it again. Black people don't listen. Using his perch as president of the NAACP to spy for military intelligence. To Stanley Levison drafting Martin Luther King Jr.'s speeches. The incessant liberal monitoring of black activity was no less oppressive if even more sophisticated than, than during the era of slavery. Next page, go down. On June 21st, 1990, the ABC television program, Nightline, aired a special New York town meeting with the ANC's Nelson Mandela, recently released from 27 years in prison and on a triumphant tour of the United States. Israel's nuclear collaboration with South Africa and its sanctions defying diamond and weapons trade with the white supremacist apartheid state were, were by then well known. So was the fact that South Africa's Jews, beneficiaries of apartheid, were the world's richest community and the world's highest per capita contributors to Israel. Exactly. So if you go to South Africa, it's beautiful. That place where, where he's talking about over there, where Amalek is, is beautiful over there. Next page. It must be a terrible, it must be a terrible bitter pill to swallow for those so-called European Jews. I have never heard them substantiate their, their charge of anti-Semitism, be it against you, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, Dr. Yosef, Ben, uh, ben Yahakinen, Dr. John Heinrich Clark, Clark, or even Louis Farrakhan. European Jew scholars admit that the Jews played an active and strong role in the African slave trade. They were involved in all facets of slavery involving Africans. They owned the ships, financed the slave hunting of voyages, controlled and operated the slave auction blocks on the east coast of the United States, brought Africans, raped African women, etc. The evidence against the Jews is overwhelmingly conclusive. The dean of the college, Nancy Kolodny, was quoted as saying that you have the right to use the book even though it is hateful. So the truth is hateful. Go ahead. What is hateful about the book? Africans are anti-Semitic when we wake up to the major fraud that was perpetuated against our people. From the Spring Dawn brothers of the NAACP to the present day, Jews have always tried to pass themselves off as paternal benefactors for African people. Mm -hmm. White women and Jews were the ones who benefited from the civil rights movement of the 60s. That's right. What you are doing has nothing to do with the hatred or anti, has nothing to do with hatred or anti-Semitism. The European Jews are not the original Semites of biblical history in the first place. That's the point right there. That's We right. read all out to get down here. Go ahead. The European Jews are not the original Semites of biblical history in the first place. They converted to Judaism in the 8th century, according That's to Arthur right. Kostler, who is a European Jew and author of the book, The 13th Tribe. Kostler termed the current Jews passing themselves off as descendants of the biblical Hebrews as one of the biggest frauds in history. That's right. Michael Bradley's book, the chosen people of the Caucasus shed more light on the issue. So that's some good stuff right there. Let's get a law a hand for that. Get mad, devils. Get mad. But the truth is coming out. The truth is coming out. So why does America support Amalek? Why does America support these so-called Israelis? Let's look at this first clip right here from Instagram. It's a Tom and Jerry clip, but just pay close attention to it. Volume. Israel, I don't hear anything. 
I hear nothing. Why West supports Israel unconditionally. Western governments support Israel because of humanity. <laughs> That's the lie they said. That's why you're going to laugh. Also, humanity. because... Watch this. Well, here's the truth right here. The Ben-Gurion Canal Project, which is Israel's initiative to construct a new canal aimed to boost their economy. It's expected to generate approximately annual revenue of $6 billion. The canal offers Western governments a superior alternative to the Suez Canal, which will solidify their control over the world's most crucial shipping route. To construct the canal, Israel must reroute it to avoid Gaza, preventing potential economic growth in the Palestinian territory. The Gaza Strip is seen as problematic for the canal project. So Israel wants to take over Gaza in the name of self-defense and use the land for their canal project. And the cheapest See, way to build through this Gaza now. Go ahead. Now is by using nuclear explosives. This will bring in billions of dollars, but it will come at the cost of millions of innocent Palestinian lives. Historically, Arab countries used the Suez Canal to pressure the West. But the new canal gives the West more flexibility in Middle East. This allows them to destabilize Middle East and expand their imperialism. So, well, all righty then. So now, let's get to the next article about CNN. CNN. Pay close attention to this article right here. Wait, wait, before you put it on the screen, so now we know, like we said before, this whole thing with Gaza, oh, their, uh, what is that called? Their dome, dome, the, what, I, and it was down that day, and it was just so caught off guard. That's all a lie. They knew it was going to happen. They let it happen, so that way it could get public. Oh, look, the hostage, they took our people hostage. We have to get them. They tried to rally the world behind them now, but the world has seen them for who they are. The the devil. Cap. Exactly. Let's see about CNN now. Watch this. CNN runs Gaza coverage past Jerusalem team operating on the shadow of IDF censor. So now, CNN is supposed to be an independent news network. It is not independent. They must run it through Jerusalem first. All their articles go through Jerusalem. Take me off the screen so people can read it. Read it again. CNN runs Gaza coverage past Jerusalem team operating under shadow of IDF censor. Read. The Jerusalem Bureau, Bureau has long reviewed all CNN stories relating to Israel and Palestine. Now it's helping shape the network's coverage of the war. You see how deep this rabbit hole goes? These damn people, bro. Go ahead. Whether the report, whether reporting from the Middle East, the United States, or anywhere else across the globe, Every CNN journalist covering Israel and Palestine must submit their work for review by the News Organization Bureau in Jerusalem prior to publication under a long-standing CNN policy. Now, you can't make this stuff up. CNN never tells us that. They, they never bring this out. It's like, what the hell is going on here? Go ahead. While CNN says the policy is meant to ensure accuracy yeah, right. in reporting on a polarizing subject. It means that much of the network's recent coverage of the war in Gaza and its reverberations around the world has been shaped by journalists who operate under the shadow of the country's military censor. So now, we'll end that right there. Y'all can read the rest of the article on your own. I'm showing you everything is deceit. Everything, there's a fraud throughout the country. Okay. That's right. Hey, Bishop, and what they, what they also do was, the, uh, I think was Alge. What do you call it? Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera. The reporters in Palestine, they locking them up and they murdering they're them. They're killing them, yeah. They're killing them because a little thing that's going on in Palestine, we would not have known if these reporters in Palestine wasn't reporting it. Exactly. So they are murdering the reporters over there, putting them in prison to stop the world from seeing the evil that the synagogues of Satan is doing over sure. there. And, and listen, I was, what we went through was way worse than what the Palestinians are going through. The only no. difference is what the Palestinians are going through now is being televised. It's be all is being broadcast worldwide so everybody can see the devastation. Nobody saw ours. So nobody, yeah, it wasn't that bad. It was way worse than this. <laughs> so, how many of you saw last week's clash? Raise your hand. Let me see. 
All right, all right. Let's open up with Jeremiah 49. Let's go back there. Jeremiah 49. Uh, <laughs> Let me think. Do I have a question yet? Do I have a question yet? No, I don't. Jeremiah 49, and we're going to open up with, let me look, let me look, let me look. We're going to open up with verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 17. Bring it out. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Mm -hmm. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof, mm -hmm. as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord. No man shall abide there. Neither shall the son of man dwell in it. Let's go to Isaiah 13, 19 as a precept. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 19. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the, of the Chaldees, excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Right, that was it. So showing you that this, when it talks about Edom here, it's going to be like Sodom and Gomorrah. That's talking about America, Babylon the Great. Now, verse 19, please. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 19. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. Stop right there. Read it again. Behold, he shall Stop. come up. The he there is the United States of America. Read again. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan. Let's talk about the swelling of Jordan, the swelling of Jordan. Give me Joshua, the book of Joshua. Uh, chapter 3 and verse 15. Joshua chapter... So we get some understanding of what it means, what it does it mean when it says um, the swelling of Jordan. Joshua 3, 15, please. Joshua chapter 3, verse 15. Bring it out. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks. For Jordan overfloweth all his banks. All the time of harvest. All the time of harvest. That the waters which came down from above stood and rose That's up. That's all we wanted. From there, give me chapter 4, verse 18. Joshua chapter 4, verse 18. Pay attention. And it came to pass, when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of Jordan, the soles of the priest's feet were lifted up unto the dry land, that the waters of Jordan returned unto their place and flowed over all his banks as they did before. Go ahead. And the people came up out of Jordan on the 10th day of the first month. So when did this, when did the Jordan overflow? What month? Hello, what month? The first month. The first month. I don't know, where did you get 10th month from? I'm looking at 10th month. Okay, give me uh, First Chronicles 12 and 15. Woo, we starting off on a good foot, right? First Chronicles 12, 15. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 15. These are they that went over Jordan in the first month mm -hmm. when it had overflown all his banks. Mm. And they put to flight all them of the valleys, both toward the east and toward the west. So again, what month did the Jordan overflow its banks? First month. First month. Okay. Let's go back now. Put the map up, put the map up, put the map up. There's a Jordan River right there. You can see it goes between the West Bank, okay, and actual Jordan right there. You got Jordan to the right, you got the West Bank to the left, and Israel to the left. Everybody sees that, right? You see the Jordan River right there in the center. Yes, sir. Okay, back to Jeremiah 49 and 19. One more again. Please. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 19. Behold, he, sh he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan. So what month is this going to be, brothers? First the month. first month. Go ahead. Against the inhabitants of the strong. Against the inhabitation of the strong. Go ahead. But I will suddenly but make him Lord run. But the Lord will suddenly what? But I will suddenly make him run away 
from her. So who's the her here? I am going to ask the question. Just write this down. NATO. NATO. Mm. Go ahead. And who and who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? And who will appoint me the time? Who's going to tell the Lord when to do it? Go ahead. And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he had taken against Edom. Edom. That's just, write this down right there. That's NATO. Go ahead. And his purposes that he had purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Write this down. America. USA. That's Teman. That's who he's making a reference to right there. Read the whole verse again. Verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he had taken against Edom. NATO. Go ahead. And his purposes that he had purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. The United States. Go ahead. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. That's so-called Israel. That's so-called Israel. Put that map up. This is the least of the flock. Do y'all see the green is the Arab world? That tiny speck is Israel. That's the least of the flock. They're the smallest right there, right over there, surrounded by heathen, other heathen nations. Okay, where you at, Jello? That was verse 20, Bishop. Go ahead. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Mm -hmm. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate well, with there's them. going to be war and something's going to happen to America. She's going to fall. Watch. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. The earth is going to be moved at the noise of America's fall. Go ahead. At the cry, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. The people in the Red Sea going to hear the destruction of the United States of America. That's right. Put that, put that, uh, uh, read. Verse 21. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. At the cry, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle. So now, when it says at the cry of the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea, this is the same thing that the prophet Joel talked about in Joel 2. Real quick, let's go there. We've covered this several times before. Joel repetition leads to mastery. Joel 2, let me hear verse uh, 19 first. How about that? Joel chapter 2, verse 19. Wait, wait, let me look at it. Let me look. If I say I'm, I want to start there. Hmm. Behold, I'll send you corn, then Lord and Joseph land. Start at 18. Verse 18. No, start at 17. Verse 17. Let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, Spare thy people. O now Lord. I, wanted, I wanted to read that because what we read in the book by Tony Martin about the ADL, the Jewish onslaught, okay, against black people. It's really against the 12 tribes of Israel. Any inkling of us waking up to our identity is detrimental to them. I'm going to show you how to do So they're going, they are creating Cop City in Atlanta, because that's what it's called, Cop City, where they're training all law enforcement throughout the country how to deal with civil unrest, uprisings, really is to be against the 12 tribes of Israel out teaching. That's the whole focus point. Focal point. Read on. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, spare thy people. Why we got to say that? Because there's going to be an onslaught against our people. Tribulation is going to be against our people. Why? Because of the teachings of the Holy Bible. That's that right. We're the Jews and they are not. Mm -hmm. They hate that thing. Our repenting me leads to their destruction. Yeah. They realize that. They don't want this taught. Go ahead. This is war. And That's let them right. say, and let Come them on. say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Because they want to, they're gonna make mockery as they're killing and imprisoning a certain remnant of us. They're gonna make mockery. Where is their God? These Israelites. They said that they're the children of God. Ha! You're in jail now. You got no food. You got no water. We whipped you. We urinated on you. What you got? Where's your God now? Go ahead. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Why? Because his land is on one side of the earth, his people on this side of the earth. Go ahead. Yea, the Lord will answer 
and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far off from you the northern army. That's the part we wanted to get to right there. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. He's going to cause something to happen in the Middle East. Ro watch as we read on. Go ahead. And will drive him into a land barren and desolate. Put the map back up. Put the map back up. The land barren and desolate is talking about the land of Israel. Put it on the screen. Okay. I, you know what? I want the one with the, the, um, the Dead Sea. That's the one I want. Yeah, you can put that up there. Y'all see the Dead Sea right there? Because as we read down, it's going to say it. Go ahead. And will drive him into a land barren and desolate. With his face towards the East Sea. His face is going to be towards the East Sea. That's the Dead Sea. Go ahead. And his hinder part toward the uttermost sea. The uttermost sea is the Mediterranean right there to the left. Go ahead. And his stink shall come up. What and does it say his stink shall come up? They're going to be destroyed. Go ahead. And his ill savor shall come up because he had done great things. Because he had done great things. Let's go back to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 20. Mm-hmm. 20, yeah, 20, 21 I want. Verse 21. No, start at 20, 20, yeah. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he had taken against Edom and his purposes that he had purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely Israel shall draw out America. America is Teman in this verse, go ahead. Surely he shall make their habitations Desolate. You're make their habitations destroyed. Go ahead. Desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. Mm -hmm. At the cry, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Everybody going here. Go ahead. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the Can eagle. put their jets up, put up their famous jet planes. And it dun, 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 dun. Now uh, Jeremiah's giving you an example. Come on. Yep. America's coming to the rescue. The northern army is coming to rescue Israel. Read it again, verse 22. Verse 22. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle. That's the United States of America, huh? And spread his wings over Bosra. Let, let, put Bosra up. Put that map back. I want to show Bosra. Put it back. Put it back. Uh, yep, y'all see Bosra right there? Right, the red box right under, that's Bozra right there. Okay, that's all of that is in what they call Jordan. That whole area right there, that is, what color is that, would you say? Beige. beige, it's like, yeah, that beige color, that's, that whole area is Jordan. And Bozra's right there. So read that again, verse 22. Verse 22, behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Bozra. Mm-hmm. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman. They're going to be afraid because guess what? NATO going to turn against them. NATO's going to turn against them. Go ahead. That's right. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Concerning Damascus. Write this down. Damascus is Syria. That is modern day Syria. Go ahead. Concerning Damascus, mm -hmm. Hamath is confounded. Hamath is one of the cities of Syria. Go ahead. And Arpad, for they have heard evil tidings. Mm -hmm. They are faint hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. There is sorrow on the sea. Because when they hear that devastation of a that happens to America, everybody going to hear about this thing. Okay. Go ahead. There is sorrow on the sea. Uh -huh. It cannot be quiet. It cannot be quiet. Why? You can't hide this thing. Go ahead. Damascus is waxed feeble uh -huh. and turneth herself to flee. Damascus is going to run too during this time. Go ahead. And fear hath seized on her. Uh -huh. Anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. Why is, uh, why is Syria going to be sad? Get Revelation 18.9. Revelation 18.9. Revelation. And bear with me a second. I am looking for something real quick. Uh huh. Go 
quiet, Jala. I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 18, verse 9. Oh, no. Hey, I'm sending y'all something, all right? Uh, wait, Jala. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, wait a minute. Uh, let me know if y'all got it. All right, go ahead, Jalel. Revelations 18, verse 9. Mm. And the kings of the earth who had committed fornication mm. and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her. Shall what? Bewail her. This, these, some of these names are the same ones that are going to destroy her, America. Go ahead. And lament for her. And cry for her. Go ahead. When they shall see the smoke of her burning. I wonder why. Go ahead. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Go ahead. And the merchants of the earth. And the merchants, the corporations of the earth. Go ahead. Shall weep and mourn over her. Uh -huh. For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Y'all got to realize America makes a lot of nations wealthy. You might say, oh, America has no dealings with Syria. That's not true. Put that on the screen. Read that. The United States remains the single largest humanitarian donor to the Syria response. With this new funding, the United States has provided more than 1.1 billion in humanitarian assistance throughout Syria and the region in FY 23, 2023. And nearly 16.8 billion since the start of the crisis. So America always divvies out money making these countries wealthy. That's what they do. Let's go on back. What, where was we at, Jello? Jeremiah chapter 49. We're in verse 24. 24. Uh-huh. Verse 24. Damascus is waxed feeble and turneth herself to flee. Mm -hmm. And fear had seized on her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. Go ahead. How is, how is the city of praise not left? The city of my joy. Hold oh, like, on. Give me Jeremiah 33 and 9. Explain the city of my praise. City of my joy. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 9. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and an honor before all nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. Let's start up in verse 7 so we know what we're talking about. Verse okay. 7. And I will cause the captivity of Judah... And the captivity of Israel to return and will build them as at the first. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby, whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and an honor before all nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. All right. So now we know what the city of praise is talking about Israel. All right. Verse 25. One more time. Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 25. How is the city of praise not left? The city of I mean, my how joy. How is it not left from being destroyed? Go ahead. The city of my joy. Mm -hmm. Therefore. Her young men shall fall in her streets. The young men in Israel shall fall in the streets. This is talking about Amalek over there. Go ahead. And all the men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad. From there, from there, from there. Give me Job 30. Give me the book of Job. No, before we get, I want you to hold Job. Get me the next clip on Amalek, please. It should be a YouTube video. Yep, that right there. This is what's going on today amongst Amalek. Let's the New York that. City's Department of Buildings is now issuing vacate orders to a synagogue over an illegal underground tunnel in the building. Police say nine men were arrested on criminal mischief and reckless endangerment charges for using a hole they dug in the wall to access the Brooklyn synagogue during off hours. Brad Milkey stop, hosts the... Stop, stop, pause it. I want you to see how they're defying the police. And if this was a group of black people, they would have shot or most of us already be dead. That's right. Go ahead. 
Start Here podcast is here with more on this. And they, they're going to ask, th they're going to hire Amalek to, to, to give a lie. That's what he's going to do. Watch this good dude's just going to lie his teeth out. Stop the cow. This all came about because police were responding to reports of a damaged wall and a disorderly group outside. So how did that turn into a Pause. secret? I got to say this. Some of you ever been on uh, Eastern Parkway? Y'all yep. seen this building, right? I see her pass it all, all the time. Average people cannot just walk up in there. Not only that, but they always have a police presence there. You see it, right? It's big police units there all the time. I remember going to Eastern Parkway, I asked my old boss, how come every Passover there's police protection? His name was uh, Lieutenant Brown from uh, Jamaica. He said, well, listen, you didn't hear from me, but every year they get a quote-unquote terrorist threat, and we have to go out there and show police presence. So you can't, even the police don't just walk up in, in there. So where did this anonymous tip come from about a hole in a wall in a tunnel? This particular group of Amalekites are against what's going on in, Pal in Palestine today. So the group with, what's the bald-headed guy's name? Green Blah! They all up in there. So one of them said, oh, you're against what we're doing in Israel? Well, we're going to make an anonymous phone call until you guys get on the, ba the bandwagon. That's what happened. Pl go back to the video. Start from the beginning again. I keep interrupting. I did it, Bishop Yawasup. I'm sorry. I won't interrupt. Go ahead. New York City's Department of Buildings is now issuing vacate orders to a synagogue over an illegal underground tunnel in the building. Police say nine men were arrested on criminal mischief and reckless endangerment charges for using a hole they dug in the wall to access the Brooklyn synagogue during off hours. Brad Milkey, host of the Start Here podcast, is here with more on this. Brad, this all came about because police were responding to reports of a damaged wall and a disorderly group outside. So how did that turn into a secret passageway? And what else do you know about what this was being used? Wait, yeah, stop. I'm sorry. Police don't respond to damaged wall. What the hell is this? That's right, building maintenance and all that. So, uh, oh, they, they called the police. There's a damaged wall. What's the police going to do? What the hell is this? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I did a y'all sub. I apologize. Go ahead. This is a really <laughs> wild story, Diane. And I think a lot of New Yorkers don't even know when they pass this brick synagogue in Crown Heights in Brooklyn that they're passing one of the most significant religious sites in the city. So this has stood for decades as the center of the Chabad Lubavitcher movement, which is known worldwide. It, in fact, attracts worshipers from all over the world who come and pray at this synagogue and come and worship. Some people get visas to study at the yeshiva here. And so what leaders of the synagogue found out recently apparently, was that some followers, some members, had built a secret tunnel going from other buildings into this space, which was shocking to them. They decided this wasn't okay with the leaders of the synagogue. They bring in a cement mixer to fill it all in, and that's Stop, when... Stop! I gotta interrupt! If you find a hole in a wall with tunnels, why would you bring in a cement fixer? Because, I'm gonna show you another clip. They pull out, uh, um, mattresses with fecal matter and blood. You got to do a whole investigation. The police just don't go, suspicious. hey, bring in the cement guys and let's fill it. This is all my life. This is a lie. They're demons, bro. Every last one. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm venting. I'm just venting. Go ahead. You don't find that suspicious? Who's confrontation? Uh, men, look at a little boy in the back. What are you doing with your hand in the high body, little boy? What are you doing <laughs> to him back there? I'm sorry. <laughs> Protecting sort of a tree in the forest from being torn down. They actually sit in the tunnel itself to keep it from being filled in. Police are called. There's actually a huge brawl at the site. At one point, people were tearing off pieces of wood to kind of create a barricade. And eventually, that results in, in actually a scuffle with police. Uh, irritant gas is used, and then uh, arrests are made. So really a, an unbelievable situation that actually exposed some pretty deep fissures in, in this pretty insular community. So how are officials from this synagogue responding now? Well, this actually created a, a pretty deep divide or exposed a divide that's been there for years because you have to sort of understand about this religious sect to understand why this tunnel was even being perhaps made is that uh, for years... Stop. The you heard it. Oh, perhaps. Here's the lies. Go back just a little bit. 
Watch the pause and a ah, perhaps he's gonna lie. The divide that's been there for years because you have to sort of understand about this religious sect to understand why this tunnel was even being perhaps made is that uh, for years, this site at 770 East Park, Eastern Parkway uh, was led by this world-famous rabbi known simply as the Rebbe who, who created all this. He died in 1994, but until then he had been arguing for this site to be expanded, saying we need more space. It's actually a pretty cramped space for the number of followers who are there. Well, there are some members of this sect who believe that the Rebbe's not dead. In fact, they see him as a living messiah. And so in honor of him, there are even disputes over whether they should put a plaque Stop up at the synagogue cat. saying he was dead. You're back to the tunnels, devil. Some people I'm said, sorry. no, he's not. And so there were arguments over whether, you know, we should expand this site. Some people thought it was moving too slowly. And so some have speculated that some of these sort of young, more extremist men, uh, younger guys, some of them perhaps even from Israel, decided in his honor to build this tunnel. The synagogue says... Stop. That makes huh? no freaking sense. In his honor, we're going to build tunnels. Oh, God. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's a terrible exactly. look for the entire religion, for the entire site, and, and that's why they're so worried, especially considering these guys might have done more harm than good. Like you said, they're issuing that vacate order. Now, Brad, this tunnel connects four neighboring buildings. So ah, you have yeah, yeah, wait, 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 wait! That, the tunnel connects four buildings. Y'all, I'm telling you, there's some evil going on with these damn rock raised rats, these river rats. Ah, hey. Amalekites. I'm going to call you by your biblical name. Your God-given name is Amalek. <laughs> go ahead. Re go hey, back. I just want to hear that part again. Yo, go ahead. That's, that's three lies already. They said COVID first. Mm -hmm. Then they said they need more space. Right. And now it's in honor of the ribby. Yeah. Which one is it? Mm -hmm. Not the cow. To build this tunnel, the synagogue says... It's a terrible look for the entire religion, for the entire site, and, and that's why they're so worried, especially considering these guys might have done more harm than good. Like you said, they're issuing that vacate order. Now, Brad, this tunnel connects four neighboring buildings. So have any other buildings been impacted here? And what happens next? Well, that's what they're trying to figure out right now. In fact, that's why the other day uh, the Department of Buildings did say that the structural integrity of this synagogue has been affected. And so they're warning people to stay away from this site. And so that's why, uh, th again, such a deep divide in this community because if people thought they were trying to help the, the, you know, the late Rebbe's vision, this it certainly all hasn't lies. helped. He's still lying. What do those tunnels got to do with helping a dead rabbi? Yeah. The hell is this? Go ahead. Helps, you know, the reputation or he the physical stability yeah. of the site. Yep. Oh, that was it? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just, oh, God. Somebody help me! Give me a uh, New York Times. Bring it out. New York Times. 60-foot tunnel under synagogue left two buildings unstable, officials say. The tunnel now, remember, the tunnels connected how many buildings? Four. Four. So they say it left two buildings unstable. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. The tunnel beneath the headquarters of the Chabad Laba Victor movement in Brooklyn prompted a confrontation that led to several arrests this week. An illegal tunnel beneath one of the most important religious sites in New York City was about 60 feet long and 8 feet across. Y'all see that? 60 feet long tunnels. Go ahead. And was not sufficiently reinforced, compromising the stability of parts of the two buildings. City's, city Part of two buildings. Go ahead. City officials said Wednesday. So remember, it connected four buildings. Hey, put this next clip up. I don't think you said this. I hope it ain't long, I thought. Is it? How long? Okay. We're going to start from the beginning. All right. Y'all got the video? All right. We're going to play this video. I'll tell you, these, these demons. Now, imagine if we had done anything like that. ADL be all on. Oh, I, we told you. Oh. Come on. Or starting off crazy as fuck 
Watch this shit, people. Watch this, night owls. Watch this crazy ass shit. Excuse the language. Yo. Yo. Underground tunnels that Yo, they're fighting cop stuff. Hasidic Jews are coming out like rats. <laughs> what the fuck? Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to. No, no. Hold on. What? No, no, play it. Wait, hold on. He's coming out. That's like rat. He needs some milk. No. Wait, look. wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Hold on. Yeah, they were trying to, so people can understand what they're watching. They built underground tunnels, or like we're carving underground tunnels. Yeah. People found out they were going to fill it up with cement. They had the cement trucks to do it. And this is them like protesting and trying to stop them from like tearing down. Uh, I think they put up cardboard and they're tearing down the cardboard. Like this is their response to it. Yo, let's see. Let's see. What? The, is, did they have an underground synagogue? No, it was a, a sex child ring. <laughs> Wait, you heard, wait, stop. Nobody heard what she just said? Come on, There's man. There's some sex trafficking going on, on now, in there. Dog. That's what you got to investigate. Go ahead. Down, uh, I think they put up cardboard and they're tearing down the cardboard. Like, this is their response to it. Yo, let's see, let's see. What? The, is, did they have an underground synagogue? No, it was a, a sex child ring. No, no. No, they're attacking the cops. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot you. They're pepper they, spray. They will shoot. This is like, it's like rats and shit. Yo, dude, was it a sex ring? Look at them in the tunnels. How what the fuck? Oh, so they have cardboard up over the tunnels. Yeah, they closed them down and they ripped it all off. Yo, and who, I wonder who got That's the lead. basement. This is in a basement. What are all those those pew that they had chairs and I have footage of the tunnels too after this that you can yeah, see. Yeah, let me see. What the hell? This is New York, this is Brooklyn, right? Crown Heights. Yeah. Crown Heights, they're building fucking that's, tunnels. That's literally about six blocks from my house. Go check it yeah, out and report back to right? us. Yeah, dude, they are crazy. They yeah. are under my home. Legitimately. I'm on the second floor, so they I it, you know. Yo. God, I have so much to say. <laughs> Yo, okay, so show the other tunnel, show the tunnels. This is wild. <clears throat> This is wild, son. What the fuck, yo? <laughs> Damn. Here's the language. They... Let's see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, holy shit. They got buckets. What the fuck? Yeah, there was like a mattress that got pulled out that's a part of the news because people are saying there's blood on it. Ugh. It was full of blood. Come what on, the man. Fuck? What Look at the doing? baby. Look at the baby stuff. <laughs> what were they doing down there? It's a trafficking ring. Clear what is it? Yeah, is it no. really? Y'all yes. saw the baby clothes and the, the the baby car seats and stuff. Somebody Look baby was getting raped down there. In. There's baby clothes everywhere. What the? F Yo, that shit is. <gasps> wow, how far were they going? The property down? manager called in and to fix the damage. Yeah. They fucked it all up. All of it. Is, is it blocks of tunnels? That's what I want to yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, like it goes. Didn't, didn't anybody yeah, hear I mean, them? That's what, they, that's what they said. The people yeah, let me, were hearing. Let me pull up a guy had a tweet. Damn. Um, is that the only video they have of that is one? Crazy. This, this should be bust. This should be videos. Every, how come it's just one video? The jail. Sheesh. All the uh, the footage I've shown is all the footage I've seen of it. So, so. yo, I, they're gonna, I, you think they're gonna get in trouble? No. <laughs> Damn, of course not. Yeah. Zionists don't get in trouble. Those are Zionists. I'm huh? sure they are oh, because oh, Orthodox. This, you know, it's funny. Well, that's so, not true because some of the there are Orthodox who, you see, who are pro Palestine. Yes, there yeah, was another yeah. angle of a video, and it was the most I I like. It was the best thing ever. It was just God. A, it was a gift to, from God. Yeah. They were getting arrested one by one and getting walked out of the the place. And right above them is an, an enormous billboard with a picture of a kid that said "Kidnapped by Hamas." <laughs> wow. And I was like, mm, well, your guys are kidnapping kids too. So, so that is a. I, they I have tweets here from December. 
of a guy saying, I swear I keep hearing Yiddish under the floor in my New York apartment. I live at ground level and we have no basement. <laughs> and then a tweet from uh, Yo, back in November, him saying, so there are Jews living under my apartment. I can hear them like they are digging or something. For the record, I live at ground level. We do not have a basement. And then it's him replying to those tweets saying, I'm not crazy. You all owe me apology. Wow. He, damn. Did he call him Vermin, though? Did anybody call him? <laughs> no, Vermin don't live under the ground. Oh so, I mean, do uh, do rats live that low? Ver <laughs> yeah. That, that's what I mean. Like, God, there had to be rats in this. People are saying that it's a child trafficking ring and a place for them to, like, move in and out and whatnot. There was, you saw there was a bunch of baby stuff. There was a bloody mattress that forensics took it to take uh, testing on it. There was baby clothes that a bunch of, the, like, the FBI people took for evidence and whatnot. What the fuck are they doing down there what are they doing reading reading the torah so are, are they like, they're investigating right now are they investigating the whole thing now like anything i'm finding is saying they don't know or some people are saying that they built the tunnels during covid so that they could get to the synagogue no oh stop because like people weren't allowed to the leave and they were getting into Jew, jewish people you were allowed to gathering. leave no one locked you in your house it was never a mandated house lockdown right you, it, you got so shot that's at not their official down. response or anything that's just like what the internet's saying and then you know what else is so fucking frustrating god forbid god forbid those guys hitting the cops were black they would all left in body bags yep man could you imagine like can you happen to like Black Israelites, like they had yeah, tunnels. Yeah. They were That's it right there. Y'all heard that? Give me Job. As we were watching that, Job kept popping up in my head. Verse 5. Job chapter 30 and verse 5. They were driven forth from among and men. Put up uh, uh, Caucasus Mountains. Go ahead, read again. They were driven forth from among men. Uh huh. They cried after them as after a thief. We chased them like they were thieves, like they stole something. Go ahead. To dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, uh -huh. in caves of the earth. In caves of the earth. They are always known for digging, okay? Just like they dug those caves out. All those man-made digs, okay, that they did during the Middle Ages. That's what Amalek did. The Khazars did. Go ahead. To dwell in cliffs of the valleys, in caves of the earth, mm -hmm. and in the rocks. Mm -hmm. Among the bushes they braid. Under the nettles they were gathered together. They were children of fools. Watch this, they were children of fools? Yay, children of base men. Base men, you add the T, you got basement. It's the lowest of the low. <laughs> God says they are the lowest. Go ahead. They were viler than the earth. God says they are viler than the earth. Go ahead. And now am I their soul. Now they call us niggas. Now they talking about us being the vilest thing. No, God says they are the vilest thing. Go ahead. Yay, I am their byword. They make us their byword, okay? From there, go to Job 24. Job, the 24th chapter. And let's read verse 13 down. Now, we often read this with context of our people, but in proper context... For your teachers out there, it's talking about Esau, the so-called white man. Watch. It's going gonna, it's gonna to explain itself. Go ahead. Job chapter 24, verse 13. Bring it out. They are of those that rebel against the light. They are those that rebel against the light. Go ahead. They know not the ways thereof. They know not the ways of God thereof. That's why they're always davening. They'll read a Talmud before they read a Torah. Go ahead. Nor abide in the paths thereof. They do not abide in the paths of God's laws. Go ahead. The murderer rising with the light killeth the poor and needy. So the murderer rising with the light killeth the poor and needy. Give me that in Isaiah 14, 32 to explain the poor for the new people online. Isaiah 14, 32. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32. Mm -hmm. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation that the Lord had founded Zion, the poor of his people, shall trust in it. So the poor, Zion, the poor of his people, shall trust in it. So when the Bible talks about the poor, it's talking about Zion, the people of Israel, our people. Go back. Job chapter 24 and verse 14. The murderer rising with the light killeth the poor and needy. And in the night is as a thief. And in the night is as a thief. Go ahead. The eye also of the adulterer. Waited for the twilight. They are the true adulterers that wait for the tri twilight. Go ahead. Saying, no eye shall see me and disguise at his face. I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with the Boston Tea Party. Anybody familiar with that? 
Who did white folks dress up as? The so-called Native American Indians. They disguise themselves. They often do that. Read on. Read on. Verse 16. In the dark, they dig through houses. Y'all see that? In the dark, they dig through houses. Go ahead. Which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. Uh huh. They know not the light. So this, what we read earlier, or we heard, found out, is that they dug tunnels to four adjacent buildings. I don't even know if the buildings were adjacent. They said the tunnels were 60 feet long, 8 feet in diameter. So they find buildings that they like, and they go and dig tunnels to it. Look at this. Somebody come look at this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, hey. What the hell is going on here? Y'all got a joke. That's a joke right there. Come on, y'all. That's funny, though. <laughs> Verse 17. Good. For the morning, for the morning is to them even as the shadow of death. That's right. If one know them. Once you find out they're the Edomites, you find out that God hates this group of people, this race. Go ahead. They are in t the terrors of the shadow of death. They are in the terrors of the shadow of death. That's why uh, Tony Martin in his book said, once you, you discover who these people are, you become n number one enemy to them. Okay, this is why no entertainer speaks up against them. This is why the, p the police department deals with them with kit gloves. Oh no, you 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 getting you throwing wood at the police and all that, popping them upside the head, and ain't nothing happening to you. What the hell is going on here? Okay, give me um Amos nine. The book of Amos, verse eleven. Chapter 9, let me look at it. Verse 1. Amos chapter 9, verse 1. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, smite the lintel of the door. So he's this prophesying about the destruction of the temple of Jerusalem, 70 AD. Go ahead. That the post may shake mm -hmm. and cut them in the head, all of them, and I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. So Israel was destroyed 70 A.D. Now, what happened regarding Rome? We don't. Verse 2. Though they dig into hell, thence shall mine hand take them. Mm -hmm. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. There's no place for what the white man did to our people that they're going to be able to hide. Whether they dig into hell... Or they go up into space. God says, there's no place they are going to hide that I will not find them. Read. That's right. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, mm -hmm. I will search and take them out. Mm -hmm. I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea. No, no. What, what goes down to the bottom of the sea, brothers? So that ain't talking about our people. This is about Esau going to the bottom of the sea in their submarines. Go ahead. Thence will I command the serpent, Leviathan, and he shall bite them, and he shall destroy them. Go ahead. And though they go into captivity. That's all I want. From there, give me Mount Seir. I want to show y'all something. Mount Seir. Mount Seir. Okay, that's Mount Seir. Give me the other ones. I don't like that one. Yeah, this one is the one I like. You can see the, how the magnitude of it. This is Mount Sierra. And y'all can see the structure, how it looks just like the uh, uh, capital of the United States. Capital. Okay. They digged into the rock. They are known for digging into rock. That's them. That's what they do. Okay. Go back to the Caucasus Mountains. They're known for digging. That's what they do. Don't get it twisted, okay? From there. From there. So now, prophecy is a good thing. W would you say yay or nay, brother? What do you say? Yeah. Prophecy is good. We, we often love prophecy. Give me Ephesians 1. We love prophecy. Yay! Walking with the giants. Ah! <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Did you bring us off? What the hell? Verse 17. 
that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, watch this, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. So brothers, we all want God to give us the spirit of wisdom. Go ahead. And revelation. And we want the Lord to bless us with that spirit of revelation. Go ahead. In the knowledge of him. In the knowledge of him. That's what you put. If y'all ain't praying for it, you better pray for it. Go ahead. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Brothers, understand. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Go ahead. That ye may know what is the hope of his calling. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. Because you're all called in here for a reason. It's not just to get a wife or a spouse. Okay. It's to improve our lives. Gain. Uh, gear ourselves towards getting the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's okay? right. To gather the 12 tribes of Israel. Read that again. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Give me Psalms 119 and 18, please. Psalms 119, verse 18. Bring it out. Open thou mine eyes. So this is what David said. This is what we all to say. Open thou my eyes. Talk about our spiritual eyes. So they talk, you all got eyes in here. It's talking about your mental eye, your spirit, your, what the world calls your third eye. Read that again. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. That's why I often say four chapters a day and consistently read. What you see today, you didn't see yesterday. And you read it. There are things I've read over and over and over and over and over and over and didn't see until last week. Like, oh, shoot, look at this. That's the Lord has to open up your spiritual eye. It comes through constant reading. Read again. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Uh -huh. yeah, that was the whole verse? That was the whole verse. So now I, gave, I wrote a quote. Put the quote on the screen for me. I wrote a quote. I want y'all to see. I hope I sent it to y'all. Did I? Did I send it or no? Okay, bear with me a second. Somebody talk. Dang, nobody got nothing clever hey, to say? Dang. Malachi, what's going on, bro? Hey, hey, shalom, shalom, family. What's up? What's up? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Read the verse again. Psalms 119, verse 18. Bring it out. Open thou mine eyes. Because many of us read the Bible, right? That we learn, even though before we came here. A lot of people read the Bible. They're showing you the Bible. You have to read it with a spiritual eyes. <laughs> Come on. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Because this thing in here, we don't even know yet. You understand? So when the Lord opened your eyes, you were able to, oh, damn, we are the children of Israel. Oh, damn, Christ is black. Uh, hey, the angels is black. The Father is black. You understand? Oh, damn, the children of Israel is black. So these are wonderful things. Why do you think they want to put us to death for? Come on, Bishop. Okay, put that quote. Read that. The Bible is the most valu valuable. Let me read it. Let me read it. The Bible is the most valuable treasure of knowledge. But it is applying God's laws that turns that knowledge into wisdom. Boss. That's right. Y'all see yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Put it back up. Put it back up. Uh, yeah, Bishop, you forgot. Uh, uh, by Bishop yeah. Netanya, you forgot that part. <laughs> so now. OC, That's don't mess right. with that quote either. I had the problem good for messing up a quote. So now we're going to talk about a carpenter. Write this down. A carpenter is a builder. A carpenter is a builder. So now prophecy is good, but without us being builders in this truth, it's all pointless. We're just going to die in a devastation just like our enemies, and we don't want that. Put that up on the screen. Read that. What is a carpenter in the Bible? The term carpenter may co correspond with the Aramaic word nagar, meaning learned man. So a carpenter in the Bible is often a learned man. It's compared to a literal carpenter. A learned man is able to, to build broken spirits. 
Everybody understand that? Give me Zechariah chapter 1. Zechariah chapter 1. And we're going to start at verse 12. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 12. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem? So that's what Zechariah asked, okay? That's what we like. Lord, how long will you not have mercy on Israel? Go ahead. And on the cities of Judah, mm -hmm. against which against which thou hast had indignation these three score and ten years. So the 70 years was where, brothers? What captivity was that? Babylon. 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 Did I hear what I just heard? Did somebody say Roman? No, no, you misheard. I misheard. No, you misheard. I misheard. I misheard. Yeah, 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 you that ain't what I just... I misheard. Yeah, you misheard, Bishop. probably got new comment. They're probably got new comment. Probably a new comment this year. Put that on the screen, please. Lord, 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 have mercy on me. Uh, where are we at? Uh, We're what's in it? verse Dalil. 13. Verse 13 now, Bishop. Go ahead. Verse 13. And the Lord answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. So the angel that come. Oh, you can take that down. Not yet. Not yet. See, they got me all discombobulated. Take the. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Verse 14. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. The heathen were at ease. Go ahead. For I was but a little displeased. God was but a little displeased. And what happened? And they helped forward the affliction. They helped hold forward the affliction upon us. All the heathen nations did that. Okay, read. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it, mm -hmm. saith the Lord of hosts. And a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Cry yet, saying, thus saith the Lord of hosts. My cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad. Shall yet be spread abroad. Go ahead. And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Watch this. Go ahead. Then lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. Four I, horns. Go ahead. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Put it on the screen now. Put it on the screen now. Yes. So these are the four horns. Babylon, Persia Media, Greeks, and Rome. Four horns, Babylon, Persia Media, Greece, and Rome. Everybody understand that? All right. Read that again. Uh, verse 19 again. Verse 19. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, What come these to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to... But these, talking about the uh, carpenters, but these, go ahead. But these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. All right, so uh, Jordan, name me some of the carpenters during Babylon. You had uh, Ezekiel. You also had Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. You also had... Um, All right, pass the mic, brother next to you. You, what you looking back for? <laughs> I want some carpenters during the time of Persia media. You had Esdras, you had Zechariah, you had Daniel as well. Daniel was a, a prophet in Babylon and Persia. Um, okay, pass the mic. 
Who gonna help? What's your name? No. Nope. What, what rank are you? MOV. MOV. Well, you might know. Pass the mic over to uh, uh, the far left. Keep going. Keep going. Yep, right there. You take the mic. Give me some carpenters during the time of Maccabees. Shalom, Bishop. Shalom. Um, during the time of Maccabees, you have uh, Judas, Simon, um, the, pretty much the five brothers. All right. Pass the mic to LaCroix. Give me some competence during the time of Rome. Uh, yeah, the, the disciples, uh, I mean the apostles. Um, yeah, uh, John the Baptist. Uh, John the Baptist, uh, the apostles, Christ. Uh, yo, he mentioned Christ last. Wow. <laughs> wow. Philly. Well, Philly. But okay, good, good, very good. <laughs> All praise the Lord. All praise. Yeah, uh, yeah, Alena, take notes, take notes. That's right. We in this building. <laughs> we here, we here, we here. You know they was yelling out wrong answers earlier. Right? <laughs> Bishop, we're not talking about that right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give me Daniel 2, please. Hey, uh... I don't know if you got any images for uh, Daniel 2. Do you, do you guys in the back? IT, do y'all? Daniel 2. Let me see him first. Let me see what you got. Let me see what y'all got. Bear with me, y'all. So we're going to go over, we're going to briefly go over Daniel, the second chapter. We're not going to go in depth. I'm just, there's just something I want out of there. You got me? So I'm going to talk about the carpenters still. All right. You can put it on the screen. All right. All right. So Daniel chapter 2 and verse 42. Let's just start there. Daniel chapter 2 verse 42. Uh, for context, so y'all know... Um, Mm, who can help me out? Uh, dip, 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 dip. Oh, Zakar. Daniel 2, just give us a brief. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Uh, in Daniel 2, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was having a, a dream that none of, his, none of his people could interpret. So they did offer up Daniel to let him know that he was an interpreter of dreams. So and what was the dream about? The dream was about um, the different captivities or the different uh, kingdoms that was going to come and the fall of the those kingdoms. What did what what the dream what was the visual of the dream? Um he seen um he seen himself a Babylon. No no just give me what he saw just it's easy answer it's not hard. Oh he gave all of them like a, a, a all of them what is the them the, what are you talking about? The uh, a um, uh, man that was made out of like gold, silver, clay, mire, stuff like that. Okay, very good. Put it on the screen. Put it on the screen. He had a dream about this image. Put oh, God, Lord have mercy. He had a dream about this image. Uh, uh, Daniel told him what the dream was, and Daniel gave the interpretation of the dream. We're going to start at verse 42, because I'm sure y'all have gone over this with the class before, correct? Many times. All right. Verse 42. Let's just start there. Daniel chapter 2, verse 42. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, mm -hmm. so the kingdom shall be partly strong. So, it is, so the feet is the last of the Roman Empire. This is what we're in right now. The toes represents the ten toes, NATO, the EU. Everybody understand that? Read it again. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong. Meaning militarily, these last kingdoms with America and NATO are partly strong militarily. Go ahead. And partly broken. Partly broken because you have all nations. If you have a kingdom made of all nations, some, each nation wants to dominate. Each nation wants bills. Each nation wants legislation made. You cannot please everybody. That's right. Read on. Verse 43. 
And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Mm -hmm. But they shall not cleave one to another. That's why I said you cannot please everybody. When you have the kingdom of all nations, all nationalities, it says they're not going to cleave one to another. They're not going to cleave. Go ahead. Even as iron is not mixed with clay. Uh -huh. Just like iron is not mixed with clay. Come on. And in the days of these kings. This part I wanted to get to. Read that part again. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Stop right there. And in the days of these kings, I don't know if y'all can zoom into the bottom of this picture. Can y'all zoom into the bottom? And in the days of these kings, I just went to the very bottom, where it says, um, yep, you, can you move it over? I want to see both feet. Okay. That whole bottom section, right? The whole bottom section, yes. Oh, God. Okay, anyway, read it again. Read it again. I'm sorry. Verse just 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. So the days of these kings is referring to down here, okay? During the time of America, during the time of NATO, the God of heaven would set up a kingdom, Okay. Now, you might ask, why did not I start up there with Rome? Because remember, all men that had life died. Everybody that followed Christ was destroyed. Then we went into slavery. We started to reawaken down here in America. Read it again. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. So the kingdom is the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. That's right. Which shall never be destroyed. And when people ask, what is the difference between... Israel, true biblical Israel, and those other movements like uh, Marcus Garvey's group, Martin Luther King's group, all those groups, those movements died with the man, the men that had founded them. Black Panther Party, okay, they don't have the same, give me this word, give, they don't have the same drive, the same power behind it. Those men were the power. This truth. Christ, the king, is the power behind this. Everybody understand that? What one man knows, all the other men know. All the other That's sisters right. know. Okay? So if one falls, there's going to be somebody else to come right behind. How many leaders are in these last days, brothers? 144,000. Read it again. And in the days of these kings, <laughs> shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. This shall never be destroyed. I don't care how ruthless the ADL makes their legislation. How, and I'm going to show you the new laws they're going to bring out too. It doesn't make a difference. You're not, the Bible prophesies this will never be destroyed. Go ahead. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. So the Hoobavits and uh, Harry and Larry, they're not getting this kingdom. This is not for other races. This is not for other nationalities. Everybody understand that? That's for all you brothers tottering on the fence. I'm not sure if the Israelite uh, the, the teachings is correct. Read it again, read it again. And the kingdom? And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It's not for other races to enjoy. That's what he's saying. They're not, yes, they're all going to, give me that, give me that, give me that. Isaiah 14. Bring it out. Yeah, they're going to be there. And let me tell you, Edomites, something. I got to say something to the Edomites out there. I got a letter. Bring Shout out, out Tuesday. I, to, I said it on a shout out Tuesday, coming up in a couple of weeks, but I'm going to say it again here. Uh, Edomite woman wrote, she sends her donations pretty much regularly. Her son is Jake. She's Esau, though. The son is, how old she said her son was? 13. I want to say 13. The son believes. So the son has been congregating for three years. Then her older son comes back into the picture. Older son is 1920. Convinces the young son, the older son is Esau, 100%. Convinces the, his little brother, hey, that's wrong. Jesus loves everybody. You should come out of that. It's not right that it's only for Israelites. That sounds racist. So now the young son goes into the world doing whatever. So the mother says, what is she to do? She said, well, I thought 
that my son, I thought I had a prophet in this truth, and I thought I was going to get some little crumb in the coming kingdom. Well, uh, Esau, I told you Edomites this. Keep the commandments and the faith of Christ, all of you. And the reason I say that, we're not al- are we allowed to tell anybody to break God's laws? No. We're not allowed to do that. And guess what? People often say, well, there's a lot of mixing going on. Yeah, that's true. There was a lot of mixing. So if per per chance somewhere down the line, there's a little Israelite back there in your daddy's side, there's nothing nobody can say or do to prevent you being saved. Everybody understand that? Okay. Now, but if you're not Israel, get ready for slavery. Give me Isaiah 14. (laughs) Isaiah chapter chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. The other nations are going to be joined with us. Go ahead. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Uh Uh-huh. They're going to learn the laws, statutes, and commandments. That's what it means. They're going to cleave to us. Go ahead. And the people shall take them. And bring them to their place. Mm-hmm. And the house of Israel shall possess them. We shall possess them. Go ahead. In the land of the Lord. For servants. They're going to be our servants. And handmaids. And they're going to be our handmaids. Go ahead. And they shall take them captives. Whose captives they were. Uh-huh. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Do y'all see what the Bible says? That's for you Israelites out there ta- teetering on the side of the fence. You're not sure if it's true. You're not sure what the Bible... Well, we're showing you right there. The other nations will be there, but they're going to be our servants. Everybody see that right there? Now, give me Titus. Let me see if I want Titus. Let me look at it. Uh, Titus 3 and 9. Hey, find me the movie uh, Little White Lies. It's on Netflix, I believe. Little White Lies. You can just put the, the cover up. I don't need the trailer. Read that for me, Jello. Titus chapter 3, verse 9. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies. And what? And genealogies. This is why Paul said to avoid genealogy because of the great amount of mixing amongst Israel. Okay. No, that ain't it. That says a little, no. Little white lie. Little, I believe... I think I gave you the right title. Read again, Jalo. I'm sorry. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Now, yes, that's it. Put it on the screen. This is the movie. It's on Netflix and on Amazon. You see the little girl with the hat on? She was raised as Amalek. That's her adult. Look, bottom left. Bottom left, that's her today. Her mom had an affair with a black man. She didn't know until she became an adult black woman. But she always knew she looked a little different. She came out with that real high yellow complexion. And all the Amalek, they knew she was something different. They said her lips was a little different. Her breast was a little perkier. Her butt was bigger. Her nose was a little broader. But it didn't come out till years later, decades later. That's what this is all about. So even amongst the rugrats, Amalek, there are people that are our people. So when you see the film, it's a documentary, it's a good film. She married a black man, okay, that was near the end. She did marry a brother, all praise to the Lord, thank God for that. That's Have right. Have beautiful black children. So uh, and that's why in our teacher, Paul said, just teach. Remember Christ said, my sheep hear my voice, strangers they will not follow. Because some of them only can only go back a few generations. And guess what? Let me tell you about women. In case you don't know it, you find out in this film. In case you don't know, women lie. She led this whole family to believe that that little brown, high yellow girl was the product of her Edomite husband. The Edomite husband leaves her, by the way. Y'all see, if y'all check it out, it's a good film, good documentary. But she held that lie till the lie couldn't hold on no more. Stop the cow. That's right. It came out. It came out. Women lie, brothers. That baby you think is yours? Just 
might not be yours. <laughs> yeah, I hope I hurt nobody's feelings. I'm just telling you. DNA testing. Yeah, hey, y'all having babies now? Y'all better get a... Me- they need to make it mandatory, but you brothers need to request that. I want to do... De- and if she get mad, F her. Because if she mad, she's trying to hide something. Oh, you don't trust me! Oh, 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 yeah! Oh, shut the hell up and go, ooh, ooh, sit your behind down somewhere. That's right. Tired of this Raised stuff. You. Where we at? Why do we go to Titus? Oh, the white woman wrote that letter. Go back to Daniel 2. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. Stop distracting me. Go ahead. <laughs> and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. That's why, brothers, don't worry. No matter what happens, no matter how many of us die, get killed, get incarcerated, this truth will never be destroyed. The <laughs> proper teachings will go on and on. It's going to blossom. Hey, find me that in Matthew 13 about the mustard tree. Yes, sir. So, so, Bishop, so the feds ain't going to be able to destroy this. The feds ain't going to be able to destroy nothing. What That's about the right. CIA? The CIA ain't going to be able to destroy nothing. Yo. The ADL ain't going to be able to destroy nothing. You heard that, Jonathan Green? Right. Even if they right. make a loss. If they say, listen, y'all got to come out of that building. Uh, they make up some law, some lie. We got to come out. Guess what? It's only going to make this truth go further and further. <laughs> the gates of hell will not. Pre- hey, give me that. I like that one, too. Give me that, Matthew. Is that Matthew uh, 16? Give me that Hello. first. Give me that one first. What's going to happen? What if, can they destroy this? No, they can't. What if they kill the leaders? What if they kill the leaders? Guess what? There's 144,000 leaders. All you men got to see yourselves as leaders, because that's what you are, leaders. Read that. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock. This rock is Christ himself. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. I will build my church. He will build his church. Go ahead. And the gates of hell. The, the gates of hell is the CIA, FBI, ADL, SPLC, so forth and so on. Go ahead. Shall not prevail against Do you it. hear what the Savior said? Do y'all believe that? Yes, sir. The gates of hell will not prevail. Yes, the hell is this? That's the same thing Daniel said. Which shall never be destroyed. Yes, That's what it says. I can read now. I can read now. This is war. Jala, where else was we supposed to go? Matthew 13, verse 31. Matthew 13, what verse? Verse 31. 31, go ahead. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, Uh The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed. That's right, come on. Which a man took and sowed in his field. Hey, can you find me a mustard seed? Grain of a mustard seed. I want to... Yeah. Okay, do y'all see the grain of the mustard seed in the, fi- in the fingertips? That's how small it is. But at the, read, 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 read. Keep that on the screen. The, gra- the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. It's the smallest of all seeds. Go ahead. But when it is grown. But when that mustard seed is grown. It is the greatest among er- herbs. And becometh a tree. Read it right. Read it again. Just messing me up, bro. Verse 32. <sighs> which indeed is the least of all seeds. Uh-huh. But when it is grown. But when it is grown. It is the greatest among herbs. Is the greatest among herbs. Go ahead. And becometh a tree. And becometh a tree. Christ is explaining. That's how the kingdom of heaven is. Was there more? So that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. All the nations gonna have to come and submit themselves to the Israelites. That's what it's talking about. All the birds gotta come and learn. Go ahead, is that it? Going back now, where was we at? Did we finish Daniel 2? No, we didn't. We went down to 44. We're still in 44. Okay, read 44 again. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, Mm -hmm. and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Get mad if you want. Stick your lip out. I don't care. Go ahead. 
But it's a break in pieces. Christ is going to break in pieces. Go ahead. And consume all these kingdoms. He's going to break in pieces NATO. He's going to break in pieces America. Break in pieces Britain. Break in pieces all the kingdoms on the earth. Go ahead. This is war. And it shall stand forever. Y'all see that? It shall stand forever. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. From there, from there, from there, from there. I was talking about now. Put the picture back on the screen of the uh, the feet. So now we know that the, the, it hasn't, the feet and toes haven't been destroyed yet. But just like there were carpenters during the time of Babylon, you had Daniel and the three brothers with him, Mishael, Hananiah, and Azariah, thank you. Um, during Persian media, you had Mordecai, you had uh, Zechariah, Haggai, Ezra. You had a whole lot during that time. Okay, all right, uh, uh, the high priest, um, Joshua, Zerubbabel, thank you, uh, Nehemiah, thank you. In Greece, you had the Maccabees, Rome, you had Christ and the 12 apostles, and you had many other apost uh, disciples that followed under them that you read about in the book of Acts, which was Barnabas and the rest of them. But now here in America, here in America, right here, we're going to talk about down here. We're in the building! We in this We're building. About that thing right there. That's right. Give me that. Give me that in Revelation 11. 11. This is war. Revelation chapter 11. Verse 3. No, not verse 3. 11. Verse 11. And after three days and a half. After 350 years of slavery, oppression. Go ahead. The spirit of life from God. Entered into them. The Holy Spirit entered into us. Go ahead. And they stood upon their feet. And we began to stand upon our feet as the Israelites. Go ahead. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. So this is the resurrected of the Israelites. Second Ezra 138. Second Ezra chapter 1, verse 38. Second Ezra chapter 1, verse 38. Go ahead. Put some names to them. Go ahead. And now, brother, behold, what glory, and see the people that come from the east, mm -hmm. unto whom I will give for leaders Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hosea, Amos, Micah, Joel, Obadiah, <laughs> and Jonah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Lord. So notice, notice, notice. It names right there. How many of it was it? Was it 15? 15, 15 names. Go to uh, chapter 2, chapter verse 18 and 19. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 18. Mm. For thy help will I send my servants Isaiah and Jeremiah. Now he mentions two more prophets are going to be here. Isaiah and Jeremy. Go ahead. After whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee 12 trees laden with diverse fruits. These are the, possibly the 12 apostles right there. Go ahead. And Read. As many fountains flow with milk and honey <laughs> and seven mighty mountains. Seven more. Go ahead. Whereupon there grow roses uh -huh. and lilies whereby I will fill thy children with joy. Now hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a clear. We coming back here, Jalo. Just hold your finger there. Give me Ecclesiastes 111. So the Lord has prophesied that he said, I'm sending everybody back. The only thing is that y'all, nobody going to know who who is. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things. See that? So Zechariah ain't going to remember he's Zechariah. Haggai ain't going to remember he's Haggai. Obadiah won't remember he's Obadiah. Abraham won't remember he's Abraham. Isaac won't remember he's Isaac. Read again. There is no remembrance of former things. The Bible says there is no remembrance of former things. Go ahead. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come. So our memories are wiped clean. He said you're, coming, you're going back to the earth and you're going to start again. Yeah, your name going to be Pookie in the beginning. But don't worry about that, Pookie. You're going to get your real name later on. That's right. <laughs> so Pookie grows up, okay? He starts to become a prophet. Give me that Revelation 7 4. Revelation 
Revelation chapter 7, verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were started, sealed. Started, 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 two. Verse 2. Started and I one, saw, just started one and we'll go down. Verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, mm -hmm. holding the four winds of the earth. Holding the four winds. The four winds represent the armies of the world. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Right? That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Give me the precept for the wind in 2 Ezra 13 and 5. 2 Ezra chapter 13, verse 5. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. So these are armies. These are militaries. So now, go back. Now I just wanted to prove that. So now we're in verse 2, Revelation 7 and 2. Yes, sir. Verse 2, Revelation 7, verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God. Uh -huh. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So the angels being told, don't let the armies loose. Don't let Armageddon begin until the servants of our God are sealed. Give me Isaiah 8, 16. Sealed with what? The Mog and David? Hell no. Okay. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Seal the law among my disciples. Okay. <laughs> so now, go back to Revelation 7. Revelation chapter 7, verse 4. Go ahead. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed in a hundred and 40 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. The leaders. These are the leaders. These are the leaders. They're not going to remember who they are. We have the understanding that God said, I'm sending back. It said 15 was the first number, right? In 2nd Ezra 1. 15, then the second chapter mentioned 3, uh, no, 2. Mm -hmm. Then it mentioned 12, then it's 7. seven he said, you're not going to know who none of these guys are. That's why it says, how could you say you love God who you never see, but hate your brother who you see. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. That's right. You don't know who you hating. Just shut your mouth, okay, and learn to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah. You don't know who that brother is. Just be quiet, okay? Let's go from there. Let's go from there. Back to 2 Ezra 2. 2 Ezra chapter 2, verse 19. And as many fountains flowing with milk and honey and seven mighty mountains whereupon there grow roses and lilies, mm -hmm. whereby I will fill thy children with joy. Go ahead. Do right to the widow, judge for the fatherless, give to the poor, defend the orphan, clothe the naked, heal the broken and the weak. So what it's taught, telling us is keep the commandments. Do what the law says to do. This plays a big part with the 144 in these last days. Read that again. Read it again. Verse 20. Do right to the widow. Judge for the, the fatherless, give to the poor, defend the orphan, clothe the naked, heal the broken and the weak. Laugh not a lame man. Now you see the part, heal the broken and the weak. The part, heal the broken, it's important as, what's the word we've been talking about, brothers? Carpenters. Carpenters. Carpenters are builders. We have to learn to heal the broken. Broken in mind, broken in spirit. Okay, read that again, verse 21. Verse 21. Heal the broken and the weak. Mm -hmm. Laugh not a lame man to scorn. Mm -hmm. Defend the maimed, and let the blind man come into the sight of my clearness. Mm -hmm. Show him the understanding. Go ahead. Keep the old and young within thy walls. Mm -hmm. Wheresoever thou findest the dead, take them and bury them, and I will give thee the first place in my resurrection. Uh-oh. Go ahead. Abide still, O my people. And take thy rest, for thy quietness shall come. And this is why we take, even when our people pass, we take it very seriously. Wherever thou findest the dead, take them, bury them, and I will give thee the first place in my resurrection. Uh, read on. Verse 25. Nourish thy children, O thou good nurse. Establish their feet. As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish. Uh-oh. It says, as for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them 
perish. Go ahead. For I will require them from among thy number. So this perish, this perish. Give me Revelation. Well, I want 21. Let me look at it. Uh, give me Revelation 14. Could go to Revelation 21, but I think I want 14. Read that 14, and let's start at 9. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. Bring it out. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in their forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. So if you take this man's, this white man's philosophies, his policies, you believe in him, his sin, that's what it's talking about, sin. Go ahead. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstones in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. Mm. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. We'll go through that later on in today's class, but not just yet. Let's go on back. So that's what we don't want. That is the lake of fire. Okay. Go back to what verse did you leave off at? Second Ezra chapter 2 verse 26. Read 26 again. As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish. So the parish is talking about that eternal damn. Give me Daniel 12. I believe it's verse 2. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Watch this. These are those that died. Watch this. Some to everlasting life. So some people that have died physically shall be resurrected to everlasting life. That's Godhood. That's power. Go ahead. And some to shame and everlasting contempt. Y'all see that? And some to shame and everlasting contempt. That's what the Ezra said when the angel said, and none of them shall perish. Okay, John 5, 29. The book of John, chapter 5, verse 29. Watch this. Am I going too fast? Okay. Verse 29. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. The resurrection of life is Godhood. The resurrection of life is eternal life. That's Godhood. Go ahead. And they That's that have right. done evil. And those that have done evil. Unto the resurrection of damnation. See that? The resurrection of damnation. That damnation is that lake of fire. So that, when we go back to 2nd Esdras, chapter, what was it? 2 and 2, what verse? 26. 26 again. 2nd Esdras 2 verse 26. As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish. Now, what y'all see it said none of them perish. Watch this. Give me, I think it's Revelation 8. I think verse 20. Watch this. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. Rejoice over her, thou, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. So jump down to 24. That's what I wanted. Verse 24. I'm talking about in America. Go ahead. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. So it says here in America is going to be the blood of prophets and of saints. But I thought he said none of them should perish. The parish is talking about that eternal damnation. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Give me Revelation 17, is not 5, uh, do, 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 6. Revelation chapter 17, verse 6. Bring it talking about America again, just a metaphor as a woman. And I saw the woman drunk the blood of the saints. Because America is going to kill a lot of our people that believe. Go ahead. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Of the blood of the martyrs, they're going to physically die. But they're not going to what, brothers? Perish. Perish in that condemnation. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. So we got to start looking at death different. Death is a door to eternal life. That's how you got to look at it. That's how you got to look at it. So the church, Christianity taught you that death is a door to damnation, only if you're wicked. Yeah. If you're in the midst of adultery, 
You're a fornicator, a liar, a child, pro- a child pedophile, molester. Then, yeah, you're going to get yours. Going back now. Let me get off that topic before I go in a d- dark place. Second Where we at? Second Ezra 2, verse 26. Go ahead. As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish. For I will require them from among thy number. Now see that B, it says, for I will require them from among thy number. Go ahead. Be not wary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh. This is what y'all need to understand. Be not wary. Some of you go through battle fatigue. You in this truth, some of you a year, two years, and you get tired of the same thing. I'm reading the Bible. I'm standing on the corner. I'm getting yelled at by big mouth black women. I'm sick of this. That's Satan. You're getting weary. You got to change it up. Go to the Lord in prayer. Okay? That's right. Supplication. Okay? Bishop, also yeah. with the battle of fatigue, what I see a lot of brothers and sisters been falling to is after four or five years, you know, the sister been with us, she ain't got no man. She never had sex in four to five years. Good. So what she do, she get weary. The battle of fatigue comes in, and she go back with the ex or something like that. Brother Stu, mm-hmm. you know, because you've been burning. you like, it been, I've been a while, I had sex. Brothers and sisters, you all go to the Lord, man. Go to the Lord. You understand? Jump, jump down on your knees and pray and fast. The Lord going to bless you. Exactly. That's right. 27, one more again. Verse 27. Be not weary. Be not weary, brothers. Don't, be, don't give up, sisters. Go ahead. For when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh. That's what y'all need to understand. The day of trouble is coming. The day of trouble and heaviness will come. Y'all ain't seen no trouble yet. None of us seen no real trouble yet. Everybody got a pretty much a decent life. I don't care if you live in a hole in a wall. Your life is better than some. when we travel out the countries. Oh, shit. You, I guarantee none of y'all want to trade places with them. You said, no, I'm going back to America. I got it good there. I could get welfare. I ain't got no welfare over there in Africa. Shoot, you on your own. Yeah, you, ain't, you, got, you got working toilets here. They ain't got that over there. Haiti, too. Jacked up. Read again. <laughs> Be not wary. For when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful. So that's why don't be wary. Because when the day of trouble comes, others shall weep and be sorrowful. Go ahead. But thou, but thou that believe and keep the commandments, shall be merry and have abundance. Read. The heathen shall envy thee. And guess what? The heathen going to envy us. Go ahead. But they shall be but they shall be able to do nothing against thee. Saith who? Saith the Lord. They ain't going to be able to do nothing against us. Y'all That's understand right. that? Yes, sir. Give me the mic. Too. Hey, y'all can put those on the screen. I, I, you put it on after the point. They put it on the screen after the point is made. Stay in the spirit, bro. Stay in the spirit back there. Nehemiah chapter 2. Watch what Nehemiah said. Watch what Nehemiah says about being a carpenter. Nehemiah chapter 2. Let's start at verse 17. Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 17. Then said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem. Let us build up the walls of Jerusalem. Go ahead. That we be no more a reproach. Mm -hmm. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me. As also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. You see what the men that Nehemiah had around him? They all agreed. They said, let us rise up and build. They were carpenters. Now, this is literal. But it also goes in the metaphorical context as well. Meaning a learned man. Go ahead. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. But watch this. But when Sanballat, but when Sanballat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem, the Arabian, heard it, they laughed. They laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, what is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? Mm. Then answered I them and said unto them, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, 
nor memorial in Jerusalem. Everybody understand that? Now, that's what a master builder does, okay? From there, let's go to 2 Maccabees 2.29. Second Maccabees chapter two and verse twenty nine. Second Maccabees chapter two verse twenty nine. Plant thy people again in thy holy place, as Moses had spoken, and the priests sung psalms of thanksgiving. Where are you at? Two. Second Maccabees two verse twenty nine. Second Maccabees two and twenty nine. For as the master builder of a new house. Must care for the whole building. For as a master builder of a new house must care for the what? The whole building. Go ahead. But he that undertaketh to set it out and paint it must seek out fit things for the adorning thereof. Even so, I think it is with us. See, even so, I think it is with us. So the writer was saying that we are that master builder. The same way you bet they were building a temple and put things in it, like when you get a new house, that's how it is in God's truth. We build one another. We got to bring things in. Read that right there. No screen. Master builder, a building contractor, a person skilled in the art of building architect. Matthew 21, 42, please. Matthew chapter 21, mm -hmm. verse 42. Yes. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? So another word for builders is what, brothers? Carpenters. 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 Read it again. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures? Did you never read? Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The stone which those carpenters rejected, those builders rejected, the builders, the carpenters during his time that he was making reference to were those religious leaders. The Pharisees, the scribes, the Sanhedrin, those, those Levites, the high priests hood in them. Everybody understand that? Read it again. Jesus said unto them, did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner? The same has become the master, the leader. That's what he means. Go ahead. This is the Lord's doing. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. So you got to think about it. You're going to build a house and you see a huge stone, strong stone. Now somebody says, hey, that would be the best stone right there to be the foundation of the house. And they go, no, nah, we want that stone back there because my friend gave me that stone. This stone that they rejected was Christ. But the Lord said, regardless of what they choose, I have still chosen Christ as the chief cornerstone, the king, the leader. Everybody understands the, the, the correlation. Yeah, yeah. correlation. Thank you. Give me Acts 411. Acts chapter 4, verse 11. And you know what that goes to show you? Brothers often say, I've been overlooked in the congregation. Brother, don't worry. God sees everything that you do. Christ was overlooked by the religious leaders. It didn't mean a hill of beans. God said, I still chose him. And his Christ works, his teaching superseded everybody. You understand that? That's, That's for you, right. man. I've been overlooked. We'll let your work speak for you. <laughs> oh, is that it? They ain't got no works? Yo, man, you probably ain't got no damn works. You understand? That's why he's overlooked. Mm. If the works is there, show me your faith, and, you know, the works going to be there. Faith without works is dead, man. There you go. That's yeah, right. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, and then regardless, Bishop, where you at? Yeah, man, you remember O.C. and um, uh, Malachi's? Malachi's? Uh -huh. There were two of them. They make noise wherever they were. They made noise so, wherever they, they was, right? Like, then you see these brothers, they're talking like that, Bishop? Yes. It's because they want you to put them in the position. Ah. That's uh, that you get it, you getting it through an unworthy way. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be around Bishop, so he'll put me there. I ain't gonna put you nowhere. I'm gonna say, hey, what do y'all think about this brother? What do y'all think about that brother? Everything. Once everybody say no, then there's no. Shoot. Give me Acts 4:11. Acts chapter 4, verse 11. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, mm -hmm. which has become the head of the corner. He's still become the head of the corner. Watch this, Acts 15:16. Watch this. 
Watch the building, what the carpenters did during the time of Christ. Well, after he resurrected and went on high. Watch this. Acts chapter 15, verse 16. Uh oh, here come. After this, I will return and will build again. Hey, wait, wait, wait. After this, I will return and what? And build again. And build again. Go ahead. The tabernacle of David. The 12 tribes of Israel. Which is fallen down. Which is fallen down. And I will build again. And I will build again. The ruins thereof. The ruins thereof. And I will set it up. That's the same thing. Give me that Amos 9 11. Amos prophesied it. The prophets, the apostles lived it. Amos 9 11, please. Amos chapter 9, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen mm -hmm. and close up the breaches thereof. Bring them together, unify them, unite them in solidarity. Go ahead. And I will raise up his ruins. Uh -huh. And I will build it uh, as in the days of old. Read that part again. You're messing me up, bro. And I will build it as in the days of old. And I will build it as in the days of old. The 12 tribes of Israel. Read. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. That we may possess the remnant of Edom. And of all the heathen. And of all the heathen. Which are called by my name. Jews and Christians. We're going to possess all of them. Let's go back to the New Testament now. Acts 15, 16 again. Acts chapter 15, verse 16. Mm -hmm. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David. So he's quoting Amos. Go ahead. Which has fallen down. So letting you know that carpenters had to be resurrected. Carpenters, in order to build, you need builders. You need carpenters, new carpenters, new builders. The same thing then is the same thing now. Go ahead. That's and I, right. And I will build again the ruins thereof. Mm -hmm. And I will set it up. God will set it up. God, that's what we read in Daniel 2. Mm -hmm. Which shall what, brothers? Never be destroyed. Go ahead. That the residue of men. That the residue of men, that's Esau. Might seek after the Lord. How are they going to seek after the Lord? In captivity. Because we're going to possess them. This is saying the same thing Amos 9 and 12 is saying. Peter just used different wording. Go ahead. And all the Gentiles. And all the Gentiles, Jews and Christians. Go ahead. Upon whom my name is called. They say, oh, I'm Jewish. I am Christian. Go ahead. Say it the Lord who doeth all these things. So Amos is saying the same thing. Well, I should say it this way. Acts is saying the same thing Amos is saying. Everybody understand that? Now, from there, give me 1 Corinthians 3 and 10. We're builders, brothers. We are builders. Sisters, y'all got some kids. You are builders too. Your mind, you're supposed to deal with them in their first stages of life. You put the wrong thing in children, they grow up all confused. Yeah, that's a Negro word, confused. <laughs> Where we at? 1 Corinthians 3, verse 10. Uh -huh. Bring it out. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder. What was the Apostle Paul? A wise master builder. What was the Apostle Paul? A wise master builder. What was me? Be what must we become? A wise master builder. We have to be just like that. Go ahead. I have laid the foundation. He said, I laid the foundation. And another buildeth. And thereof. another build. Hold that, hold that. Give me the Ephesians 2.20. Ephesians We're coming back here to Corinthians, though. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles uh -huh. and prophets. See, that? see, see, wait, wait. That's some heavy stuff right there. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles. When you hear brothers say, oh, I what was what was Paul? What was he? When you hear brothers say, I, we reject the apostle Paul. We reject the apostle Peter. Those are not wise master builders. Read verse 20 one more again. Verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and of prophets. When you hear brothers say, well, we don't go by the Old Testament prophets. We reject their teaching. They're not wise master builders either. Go ahead. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. When you hear brothers say, we don't deal with what they call J.C. They are not wise master builders. Read the verse again. Verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself <coughs> being the chief cornerstone. Go ahead. In whom all building. In whom all the building. Go ahead. Fitly framed together. 
groweth. Groweth. Because we're the temple, brothers and sisters. We're growing in his truth. Go ahead. Groweth unto an holy temple in, in the Lord. Go ahead. In whom ye also are builded together. So all of us are builded together. Go ahead. For an habitation of God through the Spirit. You got something for us? No. Oh. <laughs> Back to 1 Corinthians 3 one more again. And I think we was in verse 10. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10. According to the grace of God. That's why when I hear brothers say, I reject the apostle Paul, I ignore them. That's If y'all ain't like that, you're going to be confused. So a lot of these single sisters online, they watch all Israelite camps. We Israelite camps, we don't deal with Paul. Oh, neither do we deal with Luke. We don't deal with, give me some, first John we reject. We reject second Peter. T but you keep watching them videos. Then you come in, I'm confused because you're stupid. You reject the scriptures. That's right. Oh, yeah. When you hear people say John the Baptist was fake, he had a fake Israelite camp. Reject that those are not wise master builders. That's All right. I can do is warn y'all. When you come in here with stupidity, we're going to tell security. Throw that nigga out. Hey, hey, Bishop, we got to throw a sister out of one of the schools today. Wow. She was on uh, what you call that clubhouse with them same dudes that John the Baptist is not. And hey, Shalom King, I ain't talked to you in a while. And she comes. She is a single sister, right? Yeah, single sister. I, I, I pray for you, single sister, because a lot of you don't got your heads on right. You got no, no guidance. You have no hedge. You're all over the place. La, 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 la. <laughs> Looking for D in all the wrong places. You know what I'm talking about. Go ahead, what are you going to say? Yeah, she got to go, brothers. Whoever you brothers counseling that today, you understand? If that's her up there with them brothers that hate us, we don't hate them. They hate us. Speak right. evil about us. She's not with us. She got to go, brothers. Whoever counseling her, all right? So not only that, they reject. John the Baptist. What did Christ, hey, hey, give me that what Christ said about John. Where's that at, Matthew what? Matthew 11 and 9. Matthew chapter 11 and verse wait, 9. Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead. Matthew 11 verse 9. But what went ye to, what? But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Jesus Christ, the King, the Lord of Lords, our Creator, said he's more than a prophet. Do y'all see that? Don't look at me strange because I said Christ, That's our right. Creator. Remember it says in John 1, he created all things. There was nothing made without him. Bishop, Christ is our God. Exactly. I don't know what <laughs> People are, huh? You stupid as hell. Yeah, get a lot of hands for that. He made your black ass you behind. Now what's wrong with you? Read on, read on. Verse 10. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. So Christ says what Malachi prophesied about, prophesied about in Malachi 3 and 1, that was about John. Go ahead. Verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Dang. Go ahead. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Because in the kingdom, we all going to be what, brothers? Righteous, sinless. So Christ said there's nobody greater than John, born of women. How are you going to now read that and go, John was wicked. He made a, he made a, a wicked Israelite. Those are not wise master builders. You brothers, all I could do is warn you. You single sisters looking for love in all the wrong places, you're going to get That's yours. That's right. Let's go. Where was we at? I lost my train of thought. First Corinthians 3 and 10. One more again. Yes, sir. First Corinthians chapter 3. Can I have some more of that tea, please? Bring Mine up. got cold. I'm sorry. First Corinthians 3 verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. So that's, hey, 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 let me tell you, I ex explain that with y'all. We go to different places and teach. I can't be everywhere. Laba can't be every everywhere. So guess what? We send other brothers. Like we got 
I'm not going to say where we're going, but we got brothers going here and there. You younger men coming up, we say, hey, go there and water this truth, okay? There's a congregation there in this country. Over, go over there. Follow up with them. See what's going on. Teach them. Guide them. So that's what he means. Read that again for me. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. We go and we lay the foundation. Go ahead. And another buildeth their own. We send other brothers behind us, brother captains and officers. Hey, go behind us. And we need you men to build their own. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. So it's nothing new that we're doing. Go ahead. But let every man take heed how he buildeth their own. Ah, that's the thing. Let every man take heed how he builds their own. Go ahead. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. We can never ignore the chief cornerstone. When we see brothers tend to lean to one side and ignore Christ the king, you're going to have to go. That's right. Christ is the king. He's the Lord of lords. He is the alpha and omega. I hope everybody understands it. Read on. Verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation. Watch this. Gold. We want to build gold. Silver. We want to build silver. Precious stones. Precious stones we want to build. Wood. Uh-oh. Hey. Stubble. Uh oh. Go ahead. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it because, it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work. So every man's work shall be tried. Read. Every man's work of what sort it is. So when we send, but we're trusting brothers to build men and women to the best they can. Your goal is to build them to the gold, the silver, the precious stones. But if you go there and you uh, lollygag, you do a half, a half, half-stepping job. I, I like that term, <laughs> half-stepping job. And you come out with wood, hay, and stubble. Your work's going to come out. It's going to be revealed. Read that part again, every man's work. Verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Right, so then we send all the brothers, bro, what have you been building out here with these guys? They're weak as hell. They're right, they're murmurers, they're complainers, adulterers, liars. What is, is nobody teaching properly out here? Okay. This is why the internet is very important. Downloading the videos are very important. Yeah. And traveling is very important. Because we know there's going to come a day. We're gonna shut, they're going to shut this down. All the videos we got, they're going to shut this down. So IT, y'all got, that's why you're out rolling the spirit with us. Put your all into it. Because y'all make this truth even greater. Mm. Make people understand great through the visuals that you are showing them. Okay? First Peter 2 and 7. IT is like, you know how you got a, uh, when you're on the street teaching, you have a reader. Yep. The reader got a role in the spirit with you. IT is like the reader. They got to be in the spirit with us. So you got a reader, you got the teacher, and then you got the IT department. Every, we roll, we're supposed to be in the same spirit. If I'm talking about apples, put apples. Don't put watermelons. So what the hell is going on there? Why are you showing watermelons, brother? Bishop, you know I told him about that last week. I said, listen, you all got to take it to another level. Okay, the no IT has become like a, a reader. You know, you and yes. the reader in the same spirit. This last week I was telling them that. Mm. I said, you all got to grow, evolve. Because you know, it's a, it's a new road. We, we, what you are doing, Bishop, you are advancing or, or how to say, you elevating our teachings. Oh, you know, when, when the way how the IT, you have them do them stuff and so forth. That's elevation and you all have to grow with us. You understand? Mm -hmm. I know it's that's hard, right. but you all got to adopt. That's you understand? Right. And, right. and be on point, man. Be able to pull the right pitch and the right scripture at the right time, you know? No. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Where we at, Lee? Uh, 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 Angelo? First Peter 2 and 7. Go ahead. Unto you, therefore, which believe. Unto you, therefore, which believe. He is precious. Christ is precious. Go ahead. But unto them which be disobedient. But unto them which be disobedient to the teachings of Christ. The stone which the builders disallow, uh -huh. the same is made the head of the corner. Mm -hmm. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Christ has become a rock of offense.
offense to brothers and sisters that reject his teachings. Go ahead. Even to them which stumble at the word. Even to them which stumble at the word. Being disobedient. Being disobedient. Why do you stumble at the word? Because you are an adulterer. Because you are a liar. Because you are a thief. This is why you stumble at the word. Read that part again. Which stumble at the word, being disobedient. Mm -hmm. Where unto also they were appointed. Some of you were appointed like that. Some of you were appointed to be fornicators, liars, thieves, or whatever. Some of you. Only you have to shake yourself out of that. You better go before the Lord. Okay? Isaiah 58, 12. And if, you're, if your bottom lip is stuck out, that's because you're guilty. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12. Bring it out. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Mm. Thou shalt many raise our people shall build, go ahead. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. We shall raise up the foundations of many generations, go ahead. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. See that what we're going to be called in the kingdom? The repairers of the breach. Carpenters, builders, go ahead. The restorer of paths to dwell in. We all shall be called the restorer of paths to dwell therein. Read on. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, mm -hmm. from doing thy pleasure mm -hmm. on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. So that was it. Now, from there, give me Ephesians 2. We read Ephesians 2, right? Yes, sir, yes. Give me Jude 20. Thank you. Jude 20. We give you men and women, we give you the tools. We give you the scriptures. We give you the precepts. Watch this. Jude, verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves. As a master builder, the first thing you must build is what, brothers? Yourself. yourself. I can't do it for you. All we can do is give you the scriptures, and we see when y'all sit with us or around us, you apply. But it's when you have alone time. That shows your integrity. That shows if you truly believe what you are reading. Read it again. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep, your, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So now, what I want to touch on now is that as a master builder, all of us becoming master build, build, builders, repairers of the breach, we have to learn to be free of the works of the flesh. I saw an ad that the ad department did, and I loved it. It said, we are a peaceful people, but the God we serve is not. I want to now ponder on that thing right there. He's Somebody right now saying, but doesn't the Bible call him the Prince of Peace? Yeah, he's the Prince of Peace to the 12 tribes of Israel that obey. Right. Everybody understand that? Give me Romans 12, 18. Romans chapter 12, verse 18. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. See that? We are commanded to be a peaceful people, not in rioting. Not in gathering weapons to cause a civil unrest. Hebrews 12, 14, please. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men. See what the Bible says? Follow peace with all men. Go ahead. And holiness, mm -hmm. with, without which no man shall see the Lord. So we are a peaceful people. The Bible teaches us to be peaceful. Now, to be peaceful don't mean don't teach. Our job is to teach. Give me that Matthew 11 and 6. Watch what Christ says. Matthew chapter 11, verse 6. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. I always do this test with Edomites. If you're an Edomite or not, when we go over these scriptures, if you ain't Esau, I ain't going to offend you. A lot of our brothers that we meet from um, uh, Puerto Rico or even DR, and you can see some of them be mixed and all that. Say, so listen, we're going to go over these scriptures on, on Esau. And we're going to see where your heart, your mind is. 
We go through the scriptures. Now, if you are mad at what God said he's going to do to Esau, this ain't for you. Read it again. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. You know what Christ said? Blessed is he whosoever is not offended. And that goes for even, I don't care if you dark skin. Some of you got a Negro pean mentality. We're going to go through the scriptures. You get mad at what God says, this ain't for you. Bye, bye. Okay? Now, Zechariah 2 and 6. We are peaceful people. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. We're peaceful people. The Bible says be at peace with all men. Zechariah 2 and 6. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 6. Ho! Ho! Come forth and flee from the land of the north. North America. Saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven. Mm -hmm. Saith the Lord. Watch this. Deliver thyself. Deliver thyself. O Zion. Mm -hmm. That dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. The daughter of Babylon is who brothers? Edom. So we are dwelling. No, no, no. I heard some wrong stuff out there. I'm just overlooking it. We are dwelling with the daughter of Babylon here. <laughs> Read that again. <laughs> Verse 7. Deliver thyself, O I'm Zion. I'm about to be defeated in the spirit again. No, Read it again. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. So we dwell here. Now watch this. Watch this. And I said we are peaceful people. But God is not. Watch this. Verse eight, verse 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations, which spoiled you. So we are the glory. After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations, which spoiled you. Go ahead. For he that toucheth you. For he that touches the Israelites. Toucheth the apple of his eye. Touches his lover. We are God's fervent love. We are his bride. So when the nations touch us, there's no peace. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. There ain't no love there. They destroyed That's his right. people. He said, no, 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 I'm not letting you get away with that. Yep. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. So there are necessary steps all of us got to take to be counted worthy in God's good graces in this coming kingdom. Hebrews 11:6. Here's one of the steps we must have. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Yep. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Everybody understand that? If you don't have faith that these words are true, you cannot please God. Faith is paramount. Faith is important. That's what the Lord is requiring of us. Faith. Second Ezra 9 and 7. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 7. Mm-hmm. And everyone that shall be saved. And everybody want to be saved when this coming destruction comes. Read it again. And everyone that shall be saved uh -huh. and shall be able to escape. And shall be able to escape by what? By his works. By his works. That's keeping the commandments. And by faith. And by what? By faith. And by what? By faith. For without faith it is impossible to please God. Works and faith. Was that the whole verse? Whereby ye have believed. Whereby ye have believed. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Give me 2 Corinthians 5 and 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Bear with me. Let me find it. Yes, sir. 5 and 6. Let's start there. 2 Corinthians 5 or 6. Therefore, we are always confident. Knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Now that's another understanding of death. While we are home in this body, we are absent from the Lord. Read. For we walk by faith. For we walk by faith, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Not by sight. Not by sight. Go by what the Bible says. Go ahead. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body. Mm. And to be present with the Lord. Paul is letting us know that once we are out of this body, we are in the Lord's presence. Read it again. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body. So Paul said we are, we are willing, rather, to be absent from the body. Go ahead. And to be present with the Lord. We'd rather be present with the Lord. Paul understood death. 
That's why he didn't fear it. Peter understood death. That's why he didn't fear it. The prophets understood death. That's why they didn't fear it. We've never understood death. That's why we fear it. But guess what? We're learning now. Everybody understand? Read right. that again. Read that again for me. Verse 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Read. Wherefore, we labor. Wherefore, we labor. We work. We work in this truth. We labor. We labor. Go ahead. That whether present or absent. That whether present or absent in the Lord. We may be accepted of him. The bottom line is we want the Lord to accept us. We want, to, we want the Lord to accept us whether we are here in this body and definitely when we're out of this body. We want, the Lord, we want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Everybody understand that? That's Wisdom of right. Solomon 3 and 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 1. Pay yeah. close attention. But the souls of the righteous or in the hand of God. The righteous never dies. Go ahead. And there shall no torment touch them. When it says no torment, that's the same thing we read earlier about that lake of fire. That's that second death. Read it again. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and there shall no torment touch them. There shall no torment. That's what we read in Revelation 14, 9 down. That's not going to touch us. Go ahead. In the sight of the unwise. In the sight of the unwise, that's the ADL, the NAACP, SPLC. They seem to die. Because our body dies. Our bodies perish. Go ahead. And their departure is taken for misery. Oh, you had a miserable life. All you did was read that Bible, teach that Bible. You had a miserable life, and now you're dead. That's what it means. And their departure is taken for misery. Go ahead. And they're going from us to be utter destruction. Whether you are shot, stabbed, however it goes down, it says, and they're going from us to be utter destruction. Watch this. But they are in peace. But the righteous are at peace. Go ahead. For though they be punished in the sight of men. For though we be punished in the sight of men through incarceration, through uh, uh, torment, through uh, whether we get shot, stabbed, beheaded, whatever it is. Read it again. For though they be punished in the sight of men. How did, one, of the pro, one of the apostles died by getting hit with a club. Who was that one? Timothy. Was it Timothy or James? Timothy. Nobody remembers? Timothy. 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 Beat down by a, 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 a group of people with clubs. That's a terrible death. That's a long death. That ain't like getting beheaded. Beheaded, you die quick. But getting beat with sticks, now that takes some time. That's pain, right? there. read that again. For though they be punished in the sight of men. Watch this. Yet is their hope full of immortality. They are in Godhood. They are immortal. Everybody understands that? Go ahead. And having been a little chastised. Wait a minute. Wait. The Lord said, oh, that clubbing you got, that shooting, that beheading you got, or you got burned. They burned you to death. That's a little chastisement. Oh, they That's drowned right. you. That's a little chastisement. <laughs> oh, they, they, they tied you up in the back of a car and dragged your body, dragged you down the street. God says, that's a little chastised. Read <laughs> that again, verse 5. And having been a little chastised. So no matter what we go through, whatever form of death we go through, whether it's sickness and pain or not, it says what? And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. There's no comparison beside the godhood we shall get, the immortality we shall get, and the chastisement we suffer. There's no comparison. That's what King Solomon is telling us right here. Read that verse again. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. Go ahead. For God proved them. You see that God proved them? And found them worthy for himself. That's the point right there. Found them worthy for himself. Give me that in Matthew 10. We coming back here. We coming right back. Don't let me forget wisdom of Solomon 3. The Lord said, I'm going to test you. I'm going to try you. I'm going to prove you. Matthew 10. Uh, fear not them. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Bring it out. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Wait, 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 wait. 
I think I want to start a little bit above that. What time? Okay, we got time. We got time. Read above that. Verse 20, verse 26. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What here, I, here, come, here come verse 27. What I tell you in darkness. All those parables, those mysteries of brothers and sisters, y'all want to know it? Read it again. What I tell you in darkness. That's to tell you in darkness. That speak ye in light. Now I want you to break it down publicly for the world to hear it. Go ahead. And what ye hear in the ear. What you hear in the ear. That's that the parables. That's the mysteries, the understandings. Go ahead. That preach ye upon the housetops. I want you to preach it loud for everybody to hear it. Go ahead. And fear not them which kill the body. And understand this. What you preach that I've told you in secret is going to get you killed. Christ said the mysteries I've given you. The teachings I've given you will get you killed. Read it again. And fear not them which kill the body. Your body will be killed. But are not able to kill the soul. They can't touch the real you, your soul. Go ahead. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. He said you better fear God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. You worried about that little flimsy body you got. That weak broke down body you got. It got a it got a expiration date on it. What you scared for? Go ahead. That, that was it. Read! Verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. So he says, nobody dies without the father's consent. He said a bird won't drop dead without God saying, It's time for that bird to die. He's That's letting right. us win. We said we're talking about us. Yep. Nobody in here dies. Nobody listening dies until the father says, now it's time. Go ahead. But the very hairs of your you head. You got something you want to say? Go ahead. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. That's how important you are. The Lord said every hair on your head. Yes, you too, Lava. Every hair on your head is numbered. Go ahead. Fear ye not, therefore. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. Christ said you are more important than a bird. Go ahead. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. Confess me in what context? Fear of death. Because that's what he was talking about. Don't fear them that kill the body. So now he says what? Read it again. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. Him will I confess also before my father which is in heaven. So when you at the point of being put to death. He said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you. But if you, read on. But whosoever shall deny me before men. But in what context? You in fear of death? Him. Right? Him will I also deny before my father, which is in heaven. So if you, if you deny me when you're about to die before men, I'm going to deny you. You all understand that? Back to Wisdom of Solomon 3. Bishop, you know yes. what that proved? That proved that that brother or that sister don't have faith and they don't believe. Right. If you believe the scripture that was read early on, that when you leave this body, you're going to be with Christ, then you're not going to be afraid of, afraid of death. But the reason you're afraid is because you don't believe what this Bible says. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of you, I, hey, listen, brother. These women that run around and, uh, give me a nice word, that D-hop. You know what I'm talking about? The, the bunny hoppers. The bunny hoppers. <laughs> they don't believe nothing. And brothers, if you pee hop, you don't believe either. Oh, Go ahead. oh, Bishop, can I, I, Go ahead. I? You know the stories. So, so this this sister, right? What sister? He got a sister that was in one of the schools. Mm. Okay, a brother. The brother get put out at least three times from from IUIC. Why? Okay, he's abusive. He hit women. Damn. You know, he beats women. We kick him out. He came back, get another. The first woman he had, he got a couple of kids with her. She divorced him, left him. He go marry another sister, got her pregnant. Okay, Wait, abuse in, her. In IUIC? Yes, we kick him out. So now he was out, and this sister saw him online, and she went. The brothers tell, tell her, sister, leave that brother alone. She went behind our back and still went and messed with the brother. They got married in December. Now uh, the uh, brother took over a house, run her out of her house. Wow! You know what I mean? <laughs> he run her, he post up, run her out of her house, and he started abusing her. You understand that too? When I heard that, I like, brothers put her behind out of the school. She don't yeah. listen. 
Okay? Damn. Straight up. You're crazy, man. Mm-hmm. You Most people up. is crazy. Just don't never leave. <sighs> <laughs> Back to Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 5 again. Yes, sir. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 5. And having been a little chastised. So that's what we're going to go through, a little chastisement in these last days. No matter what the torment or torture incarceration period is, God calls it a little chastised. Go ahead. They shall be greatly rewarded. We're going to (laughs) get eternal life. We're going to get salvation. We're going to get Godhood. Go ahead. For God proved them. God proved them. He tested us. That's what we read in Matthew 10. God proved them. Go ahead. And found them worthy. That's those that confessed him before men that were putting him to death. Go ahead. And found them worthy for himself. Go ahead. As gold in the furnace hath he tried them. As gold in the furnace hath he tried them. And received them as a burnt offering. He said the death of the saints is like a burnt offering. God loves that smell. That's some heavy stuff there. So when Christ fulfilled the law of sacrifice, our death is doing the same thing. He said, that's the sacrifice of the Read that again. Verse 6, as gold in a furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine. They shall, we shall shine. That means we're going to get that eternal life, that Godhood, that new body. And run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. Hey, that's the same thing Daniel 12 and 3 said. Get that in Daniel 12 and 3. We're coming back here. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3. Bring it out. And they that be wise. And they that be wise, that's those that keep the commandments. Go ahead. Shall shine. Shall shine. As the brightness of the firmament. That's Godhood, brothers. That's Godhood. That's another level. That's the immortality, the celestial body we seek for. Read that again. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So go back to Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 7 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 7. And in the time of their visitation, Uh they shall shine. They shall shine. That's that Godhood, brothers, sisters. Go ahead. And run to and fro like sparks. That's power. That is supernatural power. Go ahead. And run to and fro like sparks Uh among the stubble. The stubble is the nations. Go ahead. They shall judge the nations. We're going to judge the nations, rule the nations, dominate the nations. And have dominion over the people. Right, read. And their Lord shall reign forever. And Christ shall reign forever. Everybody see that? And that's saying the same thing Revelation 2, 26 says. Go there. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Put it on the screen. Why do I keep putting it on the side here? Go ahead. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works. He that overcometh. Overcome what, brothers? Hey, put me the tree up. Put me the works of the flesh. Galatians 5.19. Give me that. Read Galatians 5.19. Wait till we get the picture on the screen. Now read. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now this is, this, the works of the flesh are manifest, brothers and sisters. All of us in here, all of us watching online, we must do moral inventory of ourselves Self-examination regarding the works of the flesh. Go ahead. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery. Now, if you are an adulterer, you know you're battling with the works of the flesh right there. Go ahead. Fornication. If you are a fornicator, fornication covers a lot of stuff. That deals with incest too. That deals with dealing with women on her uh, um, menstrual cycle too. Go ahead. Uncleanness. Uncleanness, which is vile affection for you pedophiles. Oh, don't say none of you are pedophiles. We had a brother in North Carolina that drove four hours. He's the first one that said, oh, the school's too far. But the Negro drove four hours to meet a 13-year-old girl and met Chris Hansen. (laughs) Met Chris. We ain't bailing you out. We ain't helping you. Read on. Lasciviousness. And lasciviousness, that's offensive sexual desires. 
This again, one more again. Lasciviousness is offensive sexual desire. Pedophilia deals with that. Homosexuality deals with that. Offensive sexual desires, you lesbians out there. Read on. Idolatry. Idolatry covers a lot. Whatever you put before God, it could be money. Some of you women are only after money. How much money the nigga got? He got benefits. He got a job. I married a nigga and get everything he got. Idolatry. Go ahead. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. If you deal with horoscopes, uh, you deal with the zodiac and the sun, the moon, the stars, what the alignments are, you deal with witchcraft. You deal with uh, weed is witchcraft. That's right. I said it. Weed. If you smoke weed to get uh, a, a high, you're dealing with witchcraft. Brother can't rap until he smoke weed. Brother can't write to save his life until he smoke. Witchcraft. Go ahead. Hatred. Ah, uh, some of you deal with hatred up in here, up in here. Go ahead. Variance. There, you always conflict. You always got to be conflicting. I say A, you say B. Go ahead. Emulations. Emulations. That's when you like to imitate, but in a negative context. I could do what you do, and I do it better. Emulation. Go ahead. Wrath. Wrath. You're always angry. Go ahead. Strife. Strife. You always got, anytime you come around, there's a strife spirit. Argument. Go ahead. Sedition. Sedition. You come with another doctrine. Go ahead. Heresy. Heresy is very similar. You come with another doctrine. Envying. Envying. You jealous of what he got or she got. Go ahead. Murders. Murders. Uh-huh. You want to put people to death that deals with malice. Go ahead. Drunkenness. You don't know your limit. You always, ex you, ex you too drink too much. Go ahead. Revelings. Revelings. Oh, you love to party. Speaking of which. Uh -oh. Damn. No, I'm not getting there yet. I'm going to touch on that a little bit. Let me look. I'm going to get there later. It's in my notes. Bring it out. I'll leave y'all alone for a moment. Where we at, uh, uh, Jaleo? That's verse 21. All right. Now go back. Revelations chapter 2, verse 26. Go ahead. And he that overcometh. Ah, so we got to overcome the works of the flesh, brothers and sisters. We all battling with something, but it's up to us to identify, take moral inventory where we fall short. What are we struggling with? Go ahead. And he that overcometh. Put on the screen. Why do you keep? That's some of y'all in here right there. That's some of y'all. As soon as you get up out of here, you smoking a blunt. Read it again. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end. You got to keep God's commandments until the end. Go ahead. To him will I give power over the nations. That's what we read in Daniel 12 and 3. That's what we read in Wisdom of Solomon 3, 1 to 8. Go ahead. And he shall rule them. And we're going to rule the nations. Come on. With a rod of iron. We ain't going to play with the other nations. We're going to teach them God's laws. Go ahead. As the vessels of a potter. Shall they be broken? We're going to break the nations to teach them God's laws. It ain't no, oh, I'm sorry, let me get it right. No. You want to eat snake? Off with your head. Okay? You want to be a pedophile? Off with your head. Go ahead. As the vessels of a potter, shall they be broken we're to gonna, shivers? We're going to break the nations to pieces. Go ahead. Even as I received of my father. Christ received that gift of his father. He said, I'm giving it to you Israelites. Go ahead. And I will give him the morning star. I will give him the morning star. He's going to give us understanding like we could not believe. You. That's why we say Godhood, brothers, sisters, Godhood. Okay. Was that the whole verse? Yes, sir. That was the whole verse. All right. From there. From there. The question is, we want that, but will we receive opposition? Yes, we will receive opposition. Give me Romans 15 and 4. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Now, the brother on the left, my left, right here, yeah, you with the glasses. Give me the four horns again. Give me a mic. Take that mic. Give me the four horns. Shalom leadership. Most high Christ bless. Um, Rome, sorry, sorry, Babylon is going to be Medo Persia, it's going to be Greek, the Greeks, and I'm Rome. Put it on the screen. Oh, very good, thank you. Put it on the screen. 
So these are the four horns that we read earlier. The question is, now you might ask, what does that have to do with Romans? Read Romans 5, 15 and 4 again. Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Uh -huh. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Now when we were in Babylon, when our people were in Babylon, trying to keep the commandments, did they receive opposition? Get Daniel 3 and 8. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 8. We're going to read down. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Accused who? Accused the Jews. Accused us. Go ahead. They spake and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Mm. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, harp, and sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. So they said to Nebuchadnezzar, hey, you made a law, king, live forever. No disrespect. You, king, you made a law that said whoever, when you hear the music, they got to bow to the statue. They got to bow to the idol. Go ahead. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Go ahead. There are certain Jews. There are certain Jews, O king, live forever, no disrespect. Go ahead. Whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Like who? Shadrach. Shadrach. Meshach. Meshach. And Abednego. Uh-huh. These men, O king. These men, O king. Have not regarded thee. They have disrespected you, king. They have disrespected the king. Go ahead. <laughs> They serve not thy gods. They don't serve your gods. Nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So you know what that's called? Opposition. It's a setup, bro, bro. It was a setup. That's a setup, bro, bro. So now, that's an example. What about during the time of Persia media? Did we get opposition? Give me Nehemiah 4, 1 through 4. The book of Nehemiah chapter 4. Bring it out. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 1. Uh -huh. But it came to pass that when Sambalot heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. Come on. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they built, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Mm, what verse you at? This is verse 4 now. Go ahead. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. Read. And cover not their iniquity. And let not their sin be blotted out from before thee. So Nehemiah prayed against the enemies. Go ahead. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Before the builders. Go ahead. So built we the wall. So built we the wall. Go ahead. And all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. Uh huh. But it came to pass. So that notice that for the people had a mind to work. Brothers, we all, the people we need around us must have a mind to work. If you got brothers and sisters who've been in the congregation, they have no, uh, no works in the body. They're wasting our time. I'm not you. talking about those who are sick and ailing. I'm not talking about old, the sick, the ailing. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about young, able men, young, able sisters, and they just sit there. And they do nothing in you. the body. You want to hear gossip? They got gossip for you. They are a waste of time. They don't have a mind to work. Read on. Verse 7, but it came to pass that when Sambalot and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth. They were pissed when the Israelites organized themselves and did God's work. Watch this. And conspired all of them together. Listen, and conspired all of them together. All the nations conspired against our forefathers. Go ahead. To come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Do y'all see the opposition we got in Persia media? 
Now let's look at the Greeks. Second Maccabees 6, 6 through 9. Second Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 6. Bring it out. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. The, Jew, the, the Greeks made laws against God's laws. The Greeks made laws, new legislation, which opposed the Most High's commandments. They also made legislation making it illegal for us to call ourselves the Israelites. I know you think it could never happen now in these last days. Au contraire, mon frère, you have no idea. Read on. Verse 7. And in the day of the king's birth, every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, mm -hmm. the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Moreover, there went out a decree. Listen good to this decree, these laws. To the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews. Against who? Against the Jews. Against our fathers, go ahead. That they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. So they made laws saying you got to follow the same customs as the Greeks. Go ahead. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles. Whosoever would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles. Should be put to death. Should what? Should be put to death. Go ahead. Then might a man have seen the present misery. So put the picture back. I mean, put the Babylon and them back up. Put it back up so we don't forget the thought. We read Romans 15 and uh, 4. The things written the fourth time was written for our learning. Put it back on the screen. We receive opposition in Babylon. We read that. We received opposition in Persian media. We read that. We read, we received opposition in Greece. We read that. Now what about Rome? Acts 12, 1 through 4. Now, Acts 12 is the early stages of the Roman Empire. Acts, what? chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands. Herod the king was an Edomite. He was an Amalekite. He would be part of the ADL today. Mm. Read. Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. So he stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the Israelites. Go ahead. And he killed James. And he killed the apostle James. The brother of John the with the sword. The brother of John with the sword. He cut his head off. Go ahead. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. It pleased the wicked Israelites. He proceeded further to take Peter also. So he arrested Peter. Go ahead. Then were the days of unleavened bread. What? And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter. The pagan holiday Easter, which we never celebrated, go ahead. To bring him forth to the people. They wanted to kill Peter publicly in front of everybody. They wanted to make a big show in Kabuto, okay, to put like in the movie uh, Braveheart. Y'all saw Braveheart? At the end, when they made it, his execution public, like in uh, Birth of a Nation, about Nat Turner, they killed him publicly to put fear in all the slaves. Esau's always done that. So opposition we read about during the time of Babylon, during the time of Persian media, during the time of the Greeks and the early stages of Rome. What about today? Revelation 12, 15. Revelations chapter 12. Verse 15. Now, this is a, this is a, a, a parable. The and dragon in this parable is the white man. The ADL, SPLC, that's them. America, that's them. That's the dragon. Read it. And the serpent. The serpent, I mean. The serpent is the dragon. Go ahead. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. The waters is going into lies. The waters is going into their communication. Thank you. CNN, New York Times, 21st Century Fox, NBC, CBS, NPR, so forth and so on. And the list goes on and on. It's always them. It has always been them. Read it again. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. The, we're the woman. We're the bride of Christ. Go ahead. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Read. And the earth helped the woman. The earth helped the woman. Here's a precept. Second Corinthians, 
Chapter 4, verse 7, regarding the earth. There's many precepts, but I like this one. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. But we have, his, have this treasure in earthen vessels. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Go ahead. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So this treasure we got is the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding. Read it again, verse 7. Verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. These earthen vessels is our bodies. Go ahead. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Right. It's all of God and not of us. So when we go back to Revelation 12 and 16 again. Yes, sir. Revelation 12, verse 16. And the earth helped the woman. The earth is those men, those prophets, those apostles resurrected, helping Israel, guiding Israel. That's what it's talking about. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. The earth don't just jump up and help you. We are made from the earth. You need men. You need women to go out and help build, help teach, help That's guide, right. help lead. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Read it again. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and, uh -huh. and swallowed up the flood. The way we open our mouth is with this Bible. We open our mouth with this Bible. But does the Bible speak by itself? No, sir. It needs prophets. It needs apostles. It needs teachers. Read it again. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth. Opened her mouth in teaching. And swallowed up the flood with the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth oh, with the woman. Oh, but there's come a day. What? Read that part again, verse 17. Verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. And the dragon's going to get so angry. Go ahead. And went to make war. This is physical. This war we're reading is no more words. It's this is war. Make, let's make laws. Let's make legislation to arrest them for hate speech. Or oh, they're saying that they're the Jews and we're not. Oh, that's hate speech. Oh, yeah. Don't you feel threatened? Oh, I'm terrified. That's what they do. They sit there. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to read to another Holocaust. Yes, that's what it's going to do. So let's make new laws. Yeah, let's say some men go to Congress and make laws. Yeah, and get them arrested. And while they're arrested, we can torture them. Not only that, we can get them fired from their jobs. Yeah, this is what we can do to them. Have them lose their houses, their homes, their jobs. Yeah, break up their families. Yes, this will work, this will work. Read it again. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You men got to understand this is war. This is war. It's been talked for a long time, but they're already making laws. That's what the book I showed you about the Jewish onslaught. They've already made laws. Now they're going to create scenarios. They thought they had us with that stupid uh, Jersey shooting. It didn't work. They couldn't prove it was any Israelite camp. The lies that they are. But it's going to, they're going to come up with something. It might be somebody sitting among us. They're going to do something evil and stupid and say, look what the Israelites did. We could use that. You hear that, uh, Lubavitch? We could do that. From there, from there, get Revelation uh, 17. We read that already. We read 18 and 20, right? Yes, we did. Okay. Once God allows the teachings to be hindered, brothers, realize that we are much closer to the end. When I say hindered, meaning they're going to stop the teaching from being taught via the internet. No more television, none of that. They're going to shut it down. That's when we know we are at the very, very end. Everybody understand what That's I'm saying? That's right. Y'all can put it up. They got us as number three, America's largest hate group. You can't make this up. We bring in families together. We bring in making boys into men, girls into women. Men into fathers, women into mothers. Oh, that's hatred. But let Cohen, the guy over the record, break up our families. That's love, though. Sexy Red, that's love. All that uh, uh, selling of drugs, music about that, that's love. But us doing music about resurrection of our people, uniting of our people, that's hate speech. That's hatred. You can't make this up. So... Understand, it's going to come to a point, even when it shut down the internet, don't worry, brothers. We're going to go out by two by twos. It's going to be hell on earth for them. Okay? It ain't going to stop. It's going to be, they're going to be, listen, 
When, we, when they was on the internet, we could turn the channel. Now they're out in the street, they're in the highways and byways. They're on everybody's freaking street, Harry. That's what's going to happen. And you scaredy cats, go home. Go, go join uh, PB Jakes. What's the name? PB Jakes. Go join him. Yeah, go, go join him. Go join uh, Creflo. Go. We don't need you scaredy cat brothers or sisters. The hell with you. Give me Psalms 37, 12. We're going to go out two by two. We're going to cover the face of every city. We're going to cover the face of every country we can. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Ain't no fear, brothers. Ain't no fear. That's Psalms 37, right. 12. Psalms chapter 37, verse 12. Hey, give me the FBI director. The wicked plotteth against the just. The wicked plotteth against the just. Read it again. The wicked plotteth against the just uh -huh. and gnasheth upon him. With his teeth. Put it on the screen. Was that the whole verse? Yes, sir. That was the whole verse. So now read that. When FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover was asked, what was the single greatest threat to the USA? He answered, Negro unity. That's the FBI. They got buildings and streets after J. Edgar Hoover. Okay. They still believe in this uh, policy, this philosophy here. That Negro unity is a threat to the United States of America. Why? What do they know that the churches don't know? Our unity is the resurrection of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's Psalm 64, right. Psalm 64, verse 2. Psalms, chapter 64, verse 2. Read. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. See what David said? Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Go ahead. From the insurrection. Of the workers of iniquity. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. They are plotting behind the scenes, making laws, rules, regulate. Y'all see what they're doing in Palestine? You think it can never happen here? How wrong you are. How wrong you are. Isaiah 59, 19. Isaiah. These are the people that run the world. Read that, Isaiah 59, 19. Yes, sir. Isaiah 59, verse 19. Mm -hmm. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. Where do we live, brother? What hemisphere is this in? West. The west. Go ahead, read it again. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west uh -huh. and his glory from the rising of the sun. That's where our brothers and sisters are in the eastern hemisphere. Go ahead. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. When the enemy comes against us, that like we read in Revelation 12, 15 through 17, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. He's only going to allow them to do but so much. He's only going to allow the wicked to do but so much. Why? That's right. To test us, to prove us. Mm. Y'all understand? That's what Christ was saying in Matthew 10. Right. Fear not them that kill the body and cannot kill the soul. It's going to be a test. Read it again. Verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Read. And the redeemer shall come to Zion mm -hmm. and unto them that turn from transgressions in Jacob. Say it, the Lord. That's what the Lord is looking for. That's what our Redeemer is looking for. Unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob. He's looking for those men and women that keep the commandments. Prove yourself, brothers and sisters. You. Prove yourself. From there. First John. Victory over sin can never be won without struggle. Victory over sin can never be won without struggle. You must struggle first to attain the victory. I hope everybody understands. Read that 1 John 5 and 4. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. Bring it out. For whatsoever is born of God. And whatsoever is born of God, meaning born again, overcometh the world. You overcome the world. You overcome the sins of the world. Go ahead. And this is the victory. And this is the victory. That overcometh the world. That overcomes the world. Even our faith. Faith. For without faith, it is what? Impossible to please God. We need faith. From there, give me Galatians 2.18. Galatians 
Galatians chapter 2, verse 18. For if I built again the things which I destroyed. Hey, put that tree back up. Put the works of the flesh back up. Read it again. Verse 18. For if I build again the things which I destroyed. If I build again the thing that I destroyed. When we're born again, we come into this truth. We destroy the adultery we may have committed. When some of us may have been in fornication, uncleanness, revelings. Some of us love the party, idolatry, witchcraft. We destroyed that. Said, no, I want to change my life. Read it again. You, for if I build again. But you build again. The things which I destroy. Now you would find yourself in adultery again. Fornication again. Vile affection again. Idolatry again. Witchcraft again. Filled with hate again. Heresy again. Murders again. Drunkenness again. Read it again. For if I build again the things which I destroyed. I make myself a transgressor. Who do you make a transgressor, brothers? Yourself. You make yourself a transgressor. You can't blame nobody else. Oh, it's his fault. It's her fault. He did this to me. He said, he said that to me. No, it's you. You make yourself a transgressor. You did that. You chose that. You. Give me uh, Romans 6.23. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. <laughs> For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. We read that in Galatians 5, 19. All the works of the flesh. The wages of sin is death. And guess what? It ain't talking about regular death. How do I know that? Find me the scripture. It's the rock. About it's for every man. You know what I'm talking about? Is it chapter 40, chapter 41? Oh, great travail. Um, 41. Where is it? Sirach, chapter 40, verse 1. Okay, read verse 1. Verse 1. Great travail is created for every man. Every man goes through tribulation. And, and, and heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam. Go ahead. From the day that they go out of their mother's womb uh -huh. till the day that they return to the mother of all things. Till the day that they return to the mother of all things. That's the earth. Till the day they die. Now. There's another precept, though, I want. Um, look, how does it go? It says, uh, don't. Um, that's it. That's it. 41 and 3. Thank you. 41 and 3. Sirach, chapter 41, verse 3. Fear not the sentence of death. Brothers, sisters, do you hear what the Lord said? Read it again. Fear not the sentence of death. Fear not the sentence of death. Go ahead. Remember them that have been before thee uh -huh. and that come after. For this is is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh. All flesh dies. All flesh dies. So when we go back to 2 Corinthians, where was we at originally? I'm sorry. Romans, Romans 6, 23. Romans 6, 20. Thank you. Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. So that death right there is not the death that everybody goes through, that this flesh goes through. That is the John 5, get, go back to John 5, 29 that Christ mentioned. John chapter 5 and verse 29. Mm -hmm. And shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. See that? Damnation. That's the death Paul was talking about in Romans 6, 23. Read it again. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So that eternal life, go back to John 5, 29. Read it again. John chapter 5, verse 29. And shall come forth, they that have done let good. Me, let me verse above it. Let me hear it. Verse 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. See that? Everybody's dead shall hear his voice. And shall come forth. Uh-huh. They that, they that have done good. So that, so... Notice it says, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Death is appointed to all flesh. But notice what he says in 29. And shall come forth, they that have done good, they that have done good, unto the resurrection of life. That's what we just read about eternal life. Go ahead. 
and they that have done evil. That, uh huh. Go ahead. Unto the resurrection of damnation. That's the death in Romans six. Go back to Romans six twenty three again. Romans chapter six verse twenty three. Mm. For the wages of sin is death. Now we know what kind of death he's talking about. The wages of breaking God's law is damnation, condemnation. Everybody understand that? It's not the regular, oh, I had a heart attack and I died. It ain't talking about that. Read it again. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. But the gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life That's is right. immortality. Godhead, celestial, uh, uh, immortal power on the earth. Go ahead. Eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's what we all want. That's what we all fighting for right there. Go ahead. Second Ezra, I'm sorry. Second Ezra 15, 27. Bring it out. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 27. Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. And for God shall not deliver you, because ye have sinned against him. I want you all to pay close attention to this. There's going to be a remnant of brothers, a remnant of sisters that are alive when tribulation comes. Read it again. Verse 27, for now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. For God shall not deliver you, because ye have sinned against him. Y'all see that? Because you have sinned against him. Get 1666. Second Ezra 1666. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 66. Let me, let me look at it. Start at, yeah, start at 66. Verse 66, what will ye do? Or how will ye hide I, I, your I think, sins? Wait, 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 wait. I think I like, I think I like 63. Verse 63. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sins. Some of you are very good. Some of you are very good at hiding your sin. You can get past me. You can get past the deacons. You can get past all of us. But you will never get past God. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Read it again. Surely. Some of you have been plowing out stupid women for years. I'm talking about an IURC. She sat there. You sat here. You were plowing her back out for years. She ain't say nothing. You didn't say nothing. Until the next perky-breasted sister walked in. And you just happened to look at her. And she stood up. Uh -huh. She looked around. And the breasts started going to the side like that. And she got mad. And she revealed you. And we ask you, brother, are you, put on the screen, are you sleeping with sister so-and-so? No, nah, brother, no, no. Strong in the Lord, power of his might. Really? Okay, go step outside the door. Sister, come back in here. He said, you's a liar. She said, oh, I got receipts. Whoop -ha! She had four. Whoop -ha! Pop, 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 pop. Well, now, why would you have? Now, here's our thought. Why would you have photographs of the brother? So she was waiting for this. She was waiting. She knew this day would come. So, sister, you let him dog you out for years. You was with it. And you didn't say nothing. And she, don't try don't, don't say stop 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 the tears stop the BS you wicked he wicked too both of y'all wicked read it again verse 63 surely he knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your hearts here's another one oh brothers I'm going on a cruise oh yeah yeah I see y'all uh, in two weeks click cruise and he told anybody going on the cruise nope Hey, find out what kind of cruise it is. Do, 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 do. Hey, what kind of cruise is that? But no, what's the name of the boat? What's the name of the boat? The boat, the name of the boat is such and such and such. Google that. Put it on the boat. Put it on the screen. <laughs> and it was the gay love boat. Love boat. Hey, da, 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 da. Hey, yo. You can't make this stuff up. Gay. Read that again. Verse 63. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your hearts, even them that sin 
and would hide their sin. Go ahead. Therefore, had the Lord exactly searched out all your works. That's why I went over earlier about doing moral inventory on yourself, self-examination. That goes for all of us. Because guess what? Once you do it, the Lord's already done it. Read it again, verse 64. Verse 64. Therefore, had the Lord exactly searched out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. He said, you know what? He or she think they got away with this. I'm going to create a scenario where it's going to come out. Here's another one. Two brothers come up. One brother says, I'm battling with porn. And the brother standing there curses him out. Ah, that guy, you weak, you simple. Blah, blah, blah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Go sit yourself down. So I didn't say a word. I didn't say it. I'm sad here. <laughs> so the brother, I'm pointing this way, but it's not these brothers here. The brother was standing here. He goes, hey, you saw the new movie that's coming out? I said, no. I didn't see the new movies coming out. He said, I sh I, have you seen the trailer? I said, no. He said, let me show you the trailer. He gives me a cell phone. And you know with Safari, when you hit play, whatever you looked up last will pop up on your food feed. What pops up? Uh, Japanese uh, anime. porn, anime porn. Uh, so is that bro? Is this what you're talking about? Hold on, get on my phone! Get on my phone! Yeah! Huh? I said, wait, wait. Didn't you just curse that brother out back there? You cursed him out like a dog. And you doing the same damn thing. How you feel now? Yeah, you go no. sit your black behind down somewhere. Read that again. Therefore, hath the Lord exactly search out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. Come on. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men, and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Mm -hmm. What will ye do, or how will ye hide? What will ye do, or how will ye hide your sins before God and his angels? Mm -hmm. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. See that? See, we, we, what can we as men do to you? Nothing. We put y'all for a month. What do y'all put people out? Three weeks? A month? A couple months. Wow, yeah. Dad, go on. I'm going to go murder somebody. God forbid. And you bring me back in three months, a month? Y'all are good. Read that again. Verse 66. What will ye do? Or how will ye hide your sins before God and his angels? Behold, God himself is the judge. God himself is the judge. Go ahead. Fear him. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities mm -hmm. to meddle no more with them forever. Meddle no more with them forever. Meddle no more with them forever. Go ahead. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. We all want to be delivered from all trouble. He said, don't meddle in your sins no more. From there, Matthew 6. Our goal, our ultimate goal, as I said earlier, is the coming kingdom on earth. We want this coming kingdom. Matthew 6 and 10. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. In where? In earth. In where? In earth. So it ain't going to be up in the sky, brothers. I don't know how Christians, they know the Lord's prayer, but they still say, yeah, we're going to live up in the sky. You ain't living up in the sky. <laughs> Read it again. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. In earth. Go ahead. As it is in heaven. Give me second as you're 1054. I was watching this Edomite named John Hagee. He said when Christ comes back, he's going to set the Democrats and the Republicans in order. He's going to put Britain and America as the ruling nations. So read that for me. Second Ezra 1050. Yeah, listen, put it on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. That's that big tub of lard right there. Look at Second Ezra 1054, please. Second Ezra 10, verse 54. For in the place wherein the highest beginneth to show his city. There can no man's building be able to stand. You hear that? When a kingdom begins to come, there will no man's building be able to stand. There it, will be no Haiti, no uh, 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 um, 
uh, Jamaica. None, no, all that's going to be gone. It's going to be gone. No White House, thank you. It's going to be gone. There will be no Ghana, no Congo, no Santo Domingo, no France. Give me Psalms 127.1. Psalms chapter 127 in verse 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. You see that? Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. So that's why we must always maintain to be in the spirit. We want the Holy Spirit to operate through us. Everybody understand that? We want to be of, of the Lord. We want to be that what Daniel prophesied in uh, Daniel 2.44. Okay, that will never be destroyed. We want to be part of that. Give me uh, Psalms 50 and 16. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 16. But unto the wicked, God saith. But unto the wicked, this is the white man, go ahead. What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? What have you to do to declare my statutes, go ahead. Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. They take the covenant of God as Jews and Christians. One takes the old covenant, one takes the new covenant. God says, what? Read it again. But unto the wicked, God saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction. Since you hate instruction, they hate God's laws. Go ahead. And castest my words behind they thee. They cast God's words behind them. Both groups, Jews and Christians, cast God's words behind them. Read. When thou sawest a thief. When they saw a thief. Then thou consentest with him. See, there would be a time when you really wouldn't understand that too much. But you look on the news. And you see in Palestine, them stealing homes and houses that don't belong to them. Read it again, that part. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him. Uh -huh. And hast been partakers with adulterers. Yeah, that's what them tunnels was for, adultery. That's what them tunnels is for here in Brooklyn. Adultery. Go ahead. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. They give their mouth to speak evil. Go ahead. And thy tongue frameth deceit. They frame lies. Go ahead. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. They speak against the Israelites. Go ahead. The real thou, Israelites. Go ahead. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. They slander us. Go ahead. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest I was altogether such and one as thyself. They said, surely Hashem is a white man. Surely God Jehovah is a white man. Wrong. Wrong. Go ahead. But I will reprove thee. God said, I will reprove you. Go ahead. And set them in order. What? Read that again. And set them in order. He will set the true Israelites in order. Everybody say that. In order. In order. In order. In order. In order. Go ahead. And set them in order. Before thine eyes. And set them in order before thine. That's what you're seeing right now. That's right. That's what you're seeing. We're living that right now. And we don't want to be castaways. Was that the old verse? Yes, sir. That was the old verse. That, oh, jump down. I'm not jump down. Give me 2 Peter 1 and 10. Second Peter's chapter 1 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. Wherefore the rather, brethren, Give diligence. Give diligence, brothers. You feel that, 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 that battle fatigue? The Bible says give diligence. Keep putting. Yeah, hey, hey. How many of you ever been in a fist fight before? Raise your hand. Let me see. You ever been in a fist fight and you get tired? But you know if you give up, you done. That's how this truth is. That's how this truth is. You know when you, <laughs> you hope somebody break it up. But if nobody breaks <laughs> You give, if you give up, you're getting stomped out. Put your teeth on the curb, nigga. Damn. Damn. No, nobody want to go through that. Shoot. Read it again. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence. Give diligence, brother. I don't care how much battle fatigue. Give diligence. Go ahead. To make your calling and election sure. To make your calling and election sure. Go ahead. For if ye do these things. If you do that, if you obey that. Go ahead. You shall never fall. You shall never fall. You see that? You shall never. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. From the Isaiah 62, 6 and 7. We all go through battle fatigue, brothers. But guess what? Keep pushing. This is war. In war, you cannot get. Hey, how many of you saw? What's that movie? Well, let me think. Let me think. 
Save was a save, saving private Ryan. Do y'all remember? Anybody saw that? There was a coward. Y'all remember the coward? He saw his partner being put to death by the, was it Russian? German. Russian. German. Pushing a knife into him. And he was so scared to fight. He watched the jerk. What was he? Yeah, that was it right there. And pushed the knife right into his partner. Then when the German, what was he? I'm sorry. The German guy gets up. He sees the coward. That might be some of you. He says, you ain't even worth killing. You're just a piece of, yeah, just walk, just walk right by you. Put it here, put it here. This is it. He sees him. That's the German guy. Look, he's so scared. I ain't a nigga like that. You can't go to war with me. Stay home and watch to get the babies. That's it right there. You can't make these. He did, the German didn't even kill a dude. You ain't even worth a bullet. Oh, God. Where was we at, Liam? I'm so, not Liam. Uh, Jaleel. Isaiah 62, verse 6. Go ahead. I have set watchmen upon thy walls. Brothers, we are the watchmen for the nation of Israel. I have set watchmen upon the wall. Go ahead. O Jerusalem. O Jerusalem. Go ahead. Which shall never hold their peace. You see that part right there? Which shall never. That's to give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Which shall never hold their peace. Peace. Go ahead. Day nor night. Day nor night. Go ahead. Ye that make mention of the Lord. You, if you're going to make mention of the Lord, go ahead. Keep not silence. Don't keep silence. Don't keep silence. Keep teaching. Keep teaching. Keep teaching. But I'm tired. Keep teaching. Go ahead. And give him no rest. And give God no rest. Go ahead. Till he establish. Till he establish. Until he make Jerusalem. A praise in the earth. Until a kingdom of heaven is established on earth. Everybody understand That's that? right. 2 Timothy 2.20. But brother, I'm tired. Go sit down. Catch a wind. Then come back. 2 Timothy Ooh. chapter 2, verse 20. But in a great house. But in a great house, the nation of Israel. Wait, 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 wait. Put that back up. Let me see. Read that. It looks, I see some big words. Battle fatigue. A post-traumatic stress disorder occurring among soldiers. We soldiers. Go ahead. Engaged in active combat. And we are engaged in active combat. Go ahead. Characterized by excessive autonomic arousal. I don't know what that means, but go ahead. Psychic numbing. Okay. And persistent reliving of traumatic experiences. Okay, I don't like that. Find me something more black. Go ahead. <laughs> Second Timothy... <laughs> 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. But in a great house. In the nation of Israel, I'm even amongst right here. Go ahead. There are not only vessels of gold. Amongst all of you men and women, there are vessels of gold. Some of you are gold. Go ahead. And of silver. Some of you are vessels of silver in here. Go ahead. But also of wood. Oh, but some of you is no damn good. Some of you are vessels of wood. <laughs> That's those of you still hiding your sins in the midst of adultery, in the midst of lying, monthly prognostication, pedophiles on the side, liars and thieves and whoremongers. That's the wood, go ahead. But also of wood uh, and of earth. And earth, yeah, that's you still no damn good, go ahead. And some to honor. Some of you are to honor. And some to dishonor. And some of you are to dishonor in this truth. See, I don't sleep. I don't, I don't have a, what's the word? A foggy, mm, you know when you look at things with roses, what do they call that? With rosy glasses, roll colored glasses, rose colored glasses. I don't look and say, oh, everybody's perfect. Oh, no. Through years of experience, I know some of you come into this truth, you know damn good. Some of you are appointed that way. I read that in the Bible, so I know that. But some of you I know are gold and silver. Some of you are trying your best to be that gold and silver. You will struggle. You will strive like we all do. Put that on the screen. All right, is this more black so I can understand it? Combat stress, also known as battle fatigue, is a common response to the mental and emotional strain that can result from dangerous and traumatic experiences. Mm. It is a natural reaction 
to the wear and tear of the body and mind after extended and demanding operations. Y'all see that battle fatigue. That's what it is. Combat stress. We all go through that. But guess what? Don't give up. Never give in. Never give up. Never give in. Keep That's pushing. right. Keep pushing. Where we at? Uh, We're in verse 21 now. Verse 21. Go ahead. Verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these. Ooh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That part right there. If a man therefore will purge himself from these. These what? The wood. The hay. What did it say? Wood and hay, right? Wood, wood and earth. Wood and earth. Those vessels that are to dishonor. That means you men, you women, you got you to gotta know each other. And through conversation, you're going to know who's gold, who's silver, who's wood, and who's earth. You ain't going to know overnight, but it's going to take a little time. But you're going to figure it out. See, this brother, this sister is no damn good. They always gossiping. They always murmuring. And the conversation is always about sex or something stupid. I tell you, when I came out, I, I had to learn quick. Get away from these niggas because they going to, every, every time we go, we go, hey, let's go hang out. End up in some damn trouble. I say, I, I, I got to stay away from these cats. I'm going to get in trouble being around these guys. Where you at, Jello? Verse 21. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, Bishop. That's, it says if you purge yourself from these, you're going to be a vessel to honor. <laughs> uh, the these is the hay, the stubbles, right? Is the brothers and sisters that ain't right. No, some of you brothers and sisters, your sit on, Deacon Abiel did a good class today when it come to murmuring and gossiping and so forth. Some of you brothers, you all sit down and you all listen to murmur and you all listen to gossiping and so forth. Listen, the person that bringing that evil, you know different from that person. I just want you all to know. Nobody trick you, nobody fool you. You right now is under that vessel to dishonor. Okay, couple brothers, we put you all, we put you all out a couple months ago, like three months ago, for, for, for gossiping, for um and so forth. We allow you all to come back, but guess what? We still got our eyes on you, cause that's some traitor stuff you all did. You understand? That's some evil stuff you all did. <laughs> we allow you to come back to the congregation. You get caught up in any foolishness again. Guess what? We ain't playing. Ain't gonna be no second chance. That is what you all know that. Straight up and straight down. We ain't playing with you all. Okay? You have some, um, what's some name? Gamiel, you here? Liam, out there in, um, Officer Liam North out there with, in North Carolina. Liam, all right, you will come back to the school. We allow you to come back after three months. But you brothers, we ain't playing with you all. You remember what we just read? It says, he that purged himself from these. So you brothers in North Carolina, look at these men. All right, watch them carefully and don't get caught up in no foolishness from these brothers. Let them prove that they are that vessel to honor and not to dishonor. Okay, so we give you all another chance. Let's see what you are going to do. Mm -hmm. Read that verse again. Verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, mm -hmm. sanctified, sanctified, and meet for the master's use. And good for Christ's use. Go ahead. And prepared unto every good work. In order to be meat for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. You got to separate yourself. Purge yourself from these brothers and sisters that are dishonorable. Brothers and sisters who are in the midst of the works of the flesh. Leave them to themselves. Okay? Let the Lord deal with them. Let them fight and struggle. Okay? If you decide you're going to bash your friend, you're gonna, when they go down, you go down too. Read on. Verse 22. Flee also youthful lusts, mm -hmm. but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Give me Acts 14.22. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples. Watch this. And exhorting them mm -hmm. to continue in the faith and that we... And that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of we God. We're going to enter the kingdom through much tribulation. It's not going to be no rose garden, okay? It ain't going to be no stone alone. No, we're going to go through much tribulation. <laughs> Why? To try us, to prove us, to test us, to see if we are worthy, okay? From there, 
Psalms 137, 5 and 6. No, I'm sorry, Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24, verse 3. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3. Uh -oh. Bring it out. Through wisdom is a house builded. So as carpenters, a house is built through wisdom. That's what we, we pray all you men acquire to yourselves, wisdom. Read it again. Through wisdom is a house builded. Uh-huh. And by understanding, it is established. And by understanding, it is, under, it is established. Go ahead. And by knowledge. And by what verse you at? That's verse 4. Go ahead. And by knowledge. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. And by all, what? Read that again. I'm sorry. And by knowledge. And by knowledge. Go ahead. Shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So that's a wise master builder. Being able to put brothers and sisters where they fit in, okay? Who has what skill, what talent, what gift, okay? What zeal, okay? What level of faith, okay? From there, Psalms 137, 5 and 6. Psalms, chapter 137, verse 5. I know you're going, what does this got to do with anything? Go ahead. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. So read it again. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem. If I forget my identity as an Israelite. Go ahead. Let my right hand forget her cunning. Let me forget how to live according to God's laws. Go ahead. If I do not remember thee. If I don't remember my identity as an Israelite. Go ahead. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Let me speak wrong. Let me teach wrong. That's what David is saying in his spirit. Now you might ask, what has that got to do with anything? It has a lot to do. By us knowing that Jerusalem is our, ho our homeland, it identifies us as Israelites. Now I'm going to say this. Uh, when we talk about countries like I always tell you, brothers and sisters from Haiti, if you're upset if we talk about Haiti, it's because you don't have Jerusalem as your first love. <laughs> Read it again. Read that part again. If I do not remember thee, let my, let my tongue cleave Read to the Read the first part again. Verse 5. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. So if you get mad when we talk about Haiti, you've forgotten Jerusalem. If you get mad if we talk about Puerto Rico, it's because Jerusalem is not your love. You forgot your identity. You really cleave and hold on to these lands of captivity. Now, I said that to say this. Our brothers and sisters in England had a fundraiser called Congo Day. And I thought to them, I said, Congo Day? I said, what about Jerusalem Day? That's right. We are not this. We are not to a make up our own holidays or days of celebration. Or go, what if what if we said, let's have America Day, and we wear the red, white, and blue with fringes? How would y'all look at us? Crazy and fake. It's the same thing. There's no difference from America Day, Haiti Day. Congo Day, freaking Puerto Rico Day, or Santo Domingo Day. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? And this happens when you don't seek counsel. When you start to do things on your own thinking. And you think it's, it's harmless. But little, later on, somebody will say, hey, I want to have a Puerto Rico Day or hey, Mexico Day. I want an Ecuador Day. What? Yeah, they did it over there. It's still going against what the scriptures wants us to lead our people to Jerusalem, lead our people to the promised land, lead our people to the kingdom, lead our people to the truth that they're the Israelites. Don't put a twist on it. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. So, in the old school, I'm going to give a few examples. In the old school, pretty woman, brother came in, his wife was very pretty. One of the men, senior men, said, hey, truth. That woman you got is so fine, she's divine. You're not worthy of her. So what we're going to do is take her 
Take your wife and give her to this brother over here. He's a high, he's a higher ranking officer. So I sat there. And I was young. I was like, how old was I? Twenty four. I think I was twenty four. And I'm like, this is freaking adultery. But Marshall was in the hospital. He was hospitalized, and I remember them, the senior men around me said, "Don't say nothing. We got to wait till Marshall comes out. He'll fix all of this." But I, I was furious. They took this brother's wife and gave it to the next man. So, the next thing, at another school, they had something called Salsa Day. I walk into school. There's a strobe light. Is it strobe? No. What's that thing? Disco ball. ball. Freaking disco ball. And a sister goes, this is Salsa Day. A bunch of Dominicans. Oh, my God. Come on now, dog. I raised hell in the school. I was told I did not have the love of Jesus. I said, this is going to lead somewhere. Sure enough, months go by. It led to the fringes going from one size to the next size to no fringes at all to eating pork, and then we can all just break the Sabbath day. Now, I know what y'all are saying. This could never happen in IUIC. Never. Well, let me hip you out of something. Some time ago in Dallas, is Dallas on air? Shout out to Dallas. Dallas, there was a married couple. They started to get into fist fights. The wife put the husband in the full Nelson. Remember, I did a, it was years ago, I did a joke with Deacon Lava. I forgot how many years ago was that? Five years ago. So, I just got told that they divorced. I said, okay, they divorced. But the husband remarried another sister. Uh, let me ask a question. Uh, you, with the glasses, you. What is that called? You, 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 you stand up. Where would you base that on? Speaking to the mic. And what's your name, by the way? Soldier Lemuel. Soldier Lemuel. What? So, what would you base that on? Because uh, she was already married. They got divorced. He married another woman he liked better. Put me on the spot for sure. I'll put you on the spot. Get a mic to the brother who's sitting right next to you. Shalom, Bishop Mustang Christ Blast. Sorry, what's your Ira. name? Soldier Ira. I Soldier Bermuda. Ira. Soldier from where? Bermuda. Bermuda. Okay, what is that called, brother? It's called adultery. Based on what? The scripture's not coming to mind. Okay, pass it to the brother next to you. Shalom, leadership. Most Shalom. Christ Bless. Mm -hmm. My name is Soldier Mattathias from Bermuda. Okay, Soldier Mattathias, what is that called? It's called adultery. And Based on what? Is in Deuteronomy 22, but I'm trying to find uh, the Pass the mic to the next brother next to you. Shalom, Bishop. Shalom. Soldier David, Philly Kent. Soldier David, Philly Kent. What is that called, David? It's adultery, Matthew 19 and 6. Okay, let's go to Matthew 19. <laughs> it's not verse 6, but we'll start at verse 6 and go down. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 6. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God had joined together, let no man put asunder. They say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to, and put her, and to put her away? He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Watch this. And I Here's say the point. Verse 9 is the point. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. So why can you put away your wife's brothers? Fornication. fornication. Go ahead. And shall marry another. You choose another woman to marry. Committed adultery. It's adultery. Go ahead. And also marrieth her. And if you marry the next woman. Which is put away. Which was put away. Doth commit adultery. That's the law. So we ooh and ah about what happened in the old school. 
But some of that's still going on in Dallas. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it's going on in Dallas. I think somebody went somewhere, but it don't make a difference. It's still adultery. It is adultery. So we get on people about New Year's Eve. We got a plethora of phone calls and emails talking about New York City. I said, what's going on? At midnight, I c they were screaming, party over here, get down boogie. Shake it, shake it, drop it like it's hot on New Year's Eve. Give me the scripture in Thessalonians about a avoid all appearance. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. The Bible says abstain from all appearance. Appearance of evil. Abstain from all. Now, I could say, oh, I know y'all wasn't celebrating New Year's Eve. But to the world and to new spirits, they go, nah, you niggas trying to be slick. Y'all are celebrating it. Give me 1 Corinthians 8. Let me see what I want. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now, Paul's talking about eating foods offered to idols. But I'm going to show you something. Start at verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 10. For, it, for if any man see the for if any man see read thee. It, we stop. Read it right. What's all this stumbling? For if any man see thee, which has knowledge, sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? So now a new brother comes in. You're in the idol's temple. He just came out of that life. You told him idols was wicked, blah, blah, blah. But you're in there eating food. He's watching you. Go ahead, verse 11. And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. Now, of course, his conscience is messed up. Because with all your knowledge, you taught him or her idols are evil. Okay, but now you're eating food. Offered to idols, and he's watching you. Go ahead. But when ye sin so it against says, the look, brethren. But when you sin, when you sin so by doing that example, setting a bad example. Read again. But when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience. I don't celebrate New Year's Eve. You told me it was evil, it was wicked. But now here it is midnight. I cut on the TV, and you are partying over here, dropping it like it's hot. What the hell is going on here? Read that again. But when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. You sin against Christ. Oh, does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Now, from there. Uh, so with all of this that I mentioned, not one bishop, not one deacon, not one captain had the nerve to say, hey, or, so, or officer, soldier. This don't look right. Hey, Dallas, that's adultery. Nobody said that. Nobody said, hey, we shouldn't be partying like this. Uh, I know we don't celebrate, but it don't, it's not a good look. Nobody said that. This is why we got to take inventory of ourselves, all of us. Give me Sirach 13 and 8. Sirach chapter 13 and verse 8. Beware that thou be not deceived and brought down in thy jollity. Sometimes you drinking, you laughing, you have a good time. Nothing wrong with that. But it will make you forget the scriptures at times. To avoid, what scripture was that? Avoid all appearance of evil? First Thessalonians 5 and 6. It will make us forget that. So we always got to take inventory. Always check ourselves. Okay, everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Give me... Uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 12. We're almost done. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. It's that quick. It's a thin line before, be between standing and falling. It's a thin line. Read it again. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Give me Proverbs 14 and 1. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 1. Every wise woman 
buildeth her house. So sisters, the Bible says every wise woman buildeth her house. Right? But the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. The foolish woman plucks it down with her hands. Why get married, sister, if your goal and objective is to take what the brother has? That, that's evil. That's wicked as hell. That's that. No, I'm not advocating this. But I have seen videos where men lose their minds and go crazy and come back with a damn uh, uh, nine millimeter. Now she's running around talk, pleading the blood of Jesus. No. You did some evil stuff. And we've seen that here in IUIC. Brother and sister get married. She knows he got a house. Already paid. House, he paid. He worked his whole life for the house. He get, they get married. She brings her unbelieving daughters in. Come on into the house. Our house. Y'all going to live here. The brother has to pay for all of the, uh, the utilities in the house and the food and everything. These grown Women, I want to use the A word, don't pay for nothing. They don't cook. They don't clean. And the brother starts to lose his mind. True story. He gets very frustrated. He shuts all the power in the house off. I, I ain't mad at him. I might have set fire to the house. But he shut all the power to the house. Anyway, they get divorced. Oh, I forgot this part. He puts... Her name on the deed of the house. Come on now, dog. So they get divorced, and she gets half of all he has. Evil black women. Some of them is sitting in here. That wooden hay. What was it? Wooden earth. Wooden earth that we were reading about. Everybody ain't for your. Help me out with some nice words. Your, your betterment. Yeah. Read that again. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish. Some women, oh, back to this other couple, Dallas. Some women, brothers, you ever see? No, I'm not saying anybody's a less peon. But there's a, a mindset, a mentality with a less peon. They want a baby, but they don't want that man attached to it. So she will lay down with a man. Uh, what they call that? Friends with benefits. Get pregnant by the man. And they, they go their separate ways. So now in Israel, you got these, some of these women with these feminist mentalities come in. She's looking around, who's handsome, who she think. Her whole goal is she makes you think she want a family. She wants a baby, but she don't want to keep you. Has the baby, and all of a sudden there's fighting, there's this, there's that going on, and now you're out the door, and she got the baby. That's all she wanted. That's evil. And you think the Lord don't, give, go back to Sirach, uh 16. The Lord sees your invent, he sees what you think and what you invent in your, I can't quote. I'm just trying to keep my composure down. I just want to, if I could overthrow this table, I would, but I can't. Read that. Second Ezra 16. 63. 63. Second, second Ezra chapter 16, verse 62. Yea, and the spirit of almighty God, which made all things, and search it out all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. Surely he knoweth your inventions. Surely he knoweth your inventions. This is what I ask for, go ahead. And what ye think in your hearts. And what you think in your heart, go ahead. Even them that sin. Even them that sin. And would hide their sin. And would hide their sin. The Lord sees all I read. Therefore hath the Lord exactly searched out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men, and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Your own sins going to be, your, that's for you adulterers and adulteresses. That's walking around in IUIC like, you, like la, 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 la. No, there's going to be a judgment for that. I hope everybody understands that. You're not going to get away. That's it's still right. adultery. Okay, it is adultery. Everybody understand that? From there. Give me Sirach 25 and 1. Sirach chapter 25 and verse 1. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together. Brother, 
you and your wife should both agree. Once you got married, why did you get married if y'all don't agree? It makes no God-given sense. It's just evil, okay? You committed fornication, stay out for two years then. Watch online, support online. That's it. And let the Lord deal with that. Why get married to somebody, you don't like her, she don't like you? I don't understand it. Now you can't stand her, she can't stand you. Some of you in relationships like that. Oh, here's another one. This was uh, Greenleaf. Anyway, sister comes in. She's married to a brother. She's married. I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to word it right. Yes. Y'all know what this means. I'm going to put some seasoning on this thing right here. <laughs> How do I want to say it? I don't want to blow nobody's spot up. That ain't my goal. But it's edifying to the body. Sister goes, my husband don't believe. Well, sister, what do you mean, your husband? He don't come to the school. He ain't no damn good. Okay, your husband don't believe. How long y'all been together? We've been together three years. You've been together three years. Okay. He got a son. He got a son. He's uh, 14 years old. He's 14 years old. Yes, and I just looked through my son's phone, which is his son. And he's been talking to men's, 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 men's that he met online. Oh, yeah? And he's been meeting those men's. And I told my husband, hey, wake up. Look, your son is dealing with men's. And he turns, I said, what do you do? He turns over and goes to sleep. He said, oh, shut the hell up. Really? And what time of night was this? This is 11 o'clock? She said, 11 o'clock at night. I said, well, this is 4 o'clock in the afternoon the next day. How old's your son? He just turned 14. So he, it's safe to say he was dealing with those men when he was 13. I said, so what, did you call the cops? Not yet. Hey, yo. There's all kind of criminality going on there. Everybody see what I see? Statutory, rape, all kind of things. But nobody gives a damn. So the boy... The boy, well, mommy, I met them outside the house at times, and he would go outside and do certain things. I'm trying to be nice. What? <laughs> he said, but mommy, he put syrup on it, and it tastes like chocolate. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Hey, yo. You can't make this stuff up. Where's the police at? Where's the behind whipping? There's some other colorful words I don't want to say, but I can. I'm on. I'm on this thing. It tastes like chocolate, mommy. The hell is this? Are you kidding me? Anyway, give me uh, Jude 116. I'm going to get off that. I'm about to go into the darkness, but I don't want to go there. It tastes like chocolate. <laughs> uh, where we at, uh, uh, Jude, verse 16. Jude, yes. Jude, verse 16. These are murmurers. Now you got to be aware of the next group of brothers and sisters around you who are murmurers. That's what you were uh, talking about a few minutes ago. I was shocked about brothers murmuring. Brothers, I, I assume, I, I, hmm. we only know what y'all allow us to see. Y'all don't show us the grimy side of yourselves. Everybody puts on their what? Representative. representative. Everybody shows their good-natured representative. So I think a brother's in, in the spirit. I think he's all right. But then I'll find out, read it again. These are <laughs> murmurers. These are murmurers, complainers. Then I hear brothers are murmuring and complaining. I'm like, wow, you can't make this stuff up. Go ahead. Walking after their own lusts. Brothers that murmur, sisters that murmur and complain too. Walk after their own lusts, their own desires, their own impulses. Go ahead. And their mouths speak a great swelling words. And their mouths speak great swelling words like lies. Go ahead. 
having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. This is like this is why they want to be near the captains. This is why they want to be near the deacons, the bishops. They want to ne be near those who have some type of influence. Read it again. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Those type of advantages the Lord don't look for. He don't want that. Read on. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. How that they told you that, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. There should be mockers in the last time. Those men, those women that don't give a damn about the Bible, but they're here. They're in the body. They're just here for an opportunity. Put it on the screen. They're just here for an opportunity. Go ahead. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. They walk after their own ungodly lust, whether it's adultery, fornication. They don't care. There's no fear of God. They don't care. They're here to get what they can get from each or every one of you. Go ahead. These be they who separate themselves. And those type of spirits that murmur and complain, those are they that separate themselves. Sensual. They are sensual. They are emotional. Go ahead. Having not the spirit. They don't have the Holy Spirit. And we got to be able to pick up on men and women like that. Give me Isaiah 41. We're almost done. We're almost out of here. We're almost done. We almost out of cha. Let me look at it first. I know some of y'all mad, but it's okay. You're going to get over it. You're going to get over it. Isaiah 41. Let me just take a look. Let me take a look. Let me take a look. Mm. Start at 40 and 29. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. He giveth power to the faint. So I'm going back to those of us that faint in this truth. You might have stumbled in this truth. It's okay. Get back up. Don't stay down. The Bible says he giveth power to the faint. Get back up. Okay? If you're going through battle fatigue, don't give up. You're struggling. You're striving. You're fighting. Stay on your feet. He giveth power to the faint. Go ahead. And to them that have no might. And to us that have no might, read. He increaseth strength. He will increase strength. He'll make sure that the proper people are put around you. Read. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. Go ahead. And the young men shall utterly fall. And the young men shall utterly fall. That's those youth that's not in this truth. Go ahead. But they that wait upon the Lord. If we wait upon the Lord, go ahead. Shall renew their strength. We shall renew our strength. Go ahead. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. There's going to come a day in the coming kingdom where we're going to be able to fly. <laughs> Read it again. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh -huh. They shall mount up with wings as we eagles. They mount up with wings as eagles. Go ahead. That's they shall right. run. They shall run. And not be weary. And we ain't going to get tired. Go ahead. And they shall walk. And we shall walk. And not faint. Now we all want to get to that part. That's the part we want. Walk in with the giants. With the giants. But all the things I just mentioned before. All the things I just mentioned before, it's like, damn, sheesh, that went on, that happened, yes. And there's more that I haven't mentioned, but we all want to get to this point that we mentioned right there. Read on. Chapter 40, verse 41, verse 1. Uh-huh. Keep silence before me. So God says, shut the hell up. Keep silent before me. Go ahead. Oh, islands. Oh, you f if you from the island, you from Haiti, Santo Domingo, Puerto Rico, shut up. Go ahead. And let the people renew their strength. And let your strength be renewed. Go ahead. Let them come near. Come near. Then let them speak. Then let them speak. Go ahead. Let us come near together to judgment. Read. Who raised up the righteous man from the east. Now this is going in verse 2 and 3 is going into Cyrus. Jump down to 4. Verse 4. Who hath wrought and done it. Write that down. 2 and 3 is going into Cyrus. King Cyrus the Persian king. Verse 4 again. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning. I, the Lord, the first, 
and with the last, I am he. Uh-huh. The isle saw it. The isle saw it. And feared. Come on. The ends of the earth were afraid, drew near, and came. Come on. They helped everyone his neighbor. They helped everyone his neighbor. And everyone said to his brother, be of good courage. Uh-huh. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. Talking about Id idols. They built idols for protection, idols for strength. Go ahead. And he that smootheth with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, saying, it is ready for the, for the soldering. And he fastened it with nails that it should not be moved. Talking about idols. Write this down. Psalms 96 verse 5 goes with that. Read. But thou, Israel. But this is what I wanted to get to. This is what I wanted to get to. After all that we talked about, brothers and sisters. But thou, Israel. Read. But thou, Israel, art my servant. We are the servants of the one true king. We are the servants of the one true God. Go ahead. Jacob. Whom I have chosen. Uh, we are the chosen. Go ahead. The seed of Abraham, my friend. We are the seed of Abraham who was God's friend. Read. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth mm -hmm. and called thee from the chief men thereof. Read. And said unto thee, thou art my servant. Mm -hmm. I have chosen thee. God has chosen us. Go ahead. And not cast thee away. And God has not cast us away. Go on, come on. Fear thou not. God says to us, don't be afraid. Don't be as scared. Fear thou not. Read. For I am with thee. God is with us, brothers and sisters. Come on. Be not dismayed. Don't be shocked. Don't be dismayed. For I am thy God. Read. I will strengthen thee. God said he will strengthen us. So when you go through battle fatigue, don't worry. God says he will strengthen you. Go ahead. Yea, I will help thee. God said I will help thee. Just be patient. Go ahead. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's Christ. Come on. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee. All the nations that hated our guts, that scoffed and mocked us. Go ahead. Shall be ashamed. Shall be ashamed. And confounded. Right. And confounded. They shall be as nothing. Those nations, these nations we see today shall be as nothing, God says. Go ahead. And they that strive with thee. And those nations that strive with us, that fight against us. Shall perish. Shall perish. That's what thus saith the Lord says. Go ahead. Thou shalt seek them. We shall seek these nations. And shall not find and them. And we shall not find these nations. Even them that contended with thee. Even them that contend with us. Go ahead. They that war against thee. Those nations that war against us that we read in Revelation 12, 17. The dragon made war with the woman. Read it again. They that war against thee. They that war against us. Shall be as nothing. Shall be as nothing. Go ahead. And as a, as a thing of naught. And as a thing of naught. Go ahead. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. Thy God will hold our right hand. Go ahead. Saying unto thee. What are you going to say? What are you going to say? Fear not. Don't be scared, brothers. Don't be scared, sisters. I will help thee. I will help thee. Come on. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob. So he calls us a worm now. Yes, we are worm. We suffer battle fatigue. We struggle with uh, child molestation, adultery, the works of the flesh. We struggle or we fight. Read it again. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob. Go ahead. And ye men of Israel, I will help thee. If we struggle and fight, he said, I will help thee. Go ahead. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. And thy Redeemer. And thy Redeemer. The Holy One of Israel. He's the Holy One of Israel. Watch this. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. He's going to change us into celestial beings. God's on earth if we That's wait right. for him. If we endure, if we strive, if we struggle, if we get back up on our feet. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Read this it again, read it again. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp thrusting instrument having teeth. He's going to turn us into deadly weapons on earth. Go ahead. Thou shalt thrust the mountains. We're going to thrust the governments on earth. And beat them small. And we're going to beat them small. That's what Christ said in Revelation 2.26. Go ahead. And shall make the hills as chaff. And we're going to make the small governments like nothing. Go ahead. Thou shalt fan them. We're going to fan these governments. And the wind shall carry them and away. And the wind shall carry them away. <laughs> and the whirlwind shall scatter and them. And the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord. And all Israel shall rejoice in the Lord. Go ahead. And shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. And we all going to glory in the Holy One of Israel. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Twelve tribes! Twelve tribes! Twelve tribes! And with that, we say shalom.
Oh, praise the Lord. I know some of y'all mad, but y'all gonna get over it. It's all right. We love you, liars. We love you, adulterers. You, we love you all. It's all right. It's gonna be okay. You murmurers, we love y'all too. Everybody have a seat. All praises. Repent. Let's get it together. That's right. All praises, man. All praises. You know that. Some things in their hood, Bishop, you know what I mean? But that's what we need. Yes, sir. You know, I, hey, I do want to apologize to those of y'all that was offended New Year's. Y'all know we don't celebrate that. But again, we shouldn't have been partying on, we shouldn't be going in on that day that way. So I do want to apologize to those of y'all that was offended, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I got cut. <laughs> <laughs> so it hurt, Bishop, it hurt, you know what I mean? But yeah, man. Yeah, me too. We man. need, we need, we, you know, but we got to do better. We got to do right. You understand? And that's what this truth is about. We got to, we got to do right. We got to do better. You know, one mistake could destroy your whole reputation. Now, well, that's a heavy scripture that was put early on. You know, we got to be very mindful. Our adversary, Satan, he's there to destroy us. I hope you all understand that. Yeah, that's real talk, D. The scripture is clear, man. Stay away from the appearance of evil. But we did what we did. Brothers and sisters know we don't celebrate that. But the appearance of it showing that. But we, we in our URC, we want to apologize. The leadership on the apologize, especially the brothers that was in New York. That, 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 that was, we was doing that. We want to apologize to y'all guys. Y'all know we don't roll like that. So, all right? Y'all got to stay in the spirit. Yeah. All praises to the Most High. Let's uh, begin with the announcements. First one. <clears throat> so IUIC puts boots on the IUIC DC puts boots on the ground in a local barbershop to continue to push the gospel. To the four corners, we had a willing crowd, even one brother taking notes. Lord's will, many repent. Subscribe to IUIC DC on all social media platforms. Play the video. Play the video. Hey. Left alone. By her being what? Left alone. Independent. Unprotected. Uh, what? Unprotected. So the independent strong black woman is unprotected. That's what the white man is saying. Come on. With the male image destroyed. With the black male image destroyed. Watch this. The ordeal caused her to move from her psychological dependent state Meaning in subjection to her black man as God ordained to a frozen independent state. What did Beyonce say? What? A frozen independent state. So Beyonce got a song champion the breaking process of the black woman. All my independent women meaning what she's by herself and unprotected. All praises to the most high. Shout out IUIC DC and Captain Matthew. Next ad. So the new moon is a sign of feast. Make sure your seat isn't empty. Beginning January 25th, 2024 at sundown. Next ad. All right. Find a school near you. The website is israelunite.org. Our phone number is 855-484-4842. Next ad. <clears throat> All right. We're seeking your assistance to enhance our national broadcast. Kindly spare a minute to provide feedback by answering five brief questions. Thank you for your time. So take out your phones, scan the QR code. It only takes a few seconds. Next video. Sabbath morning, rise and shine, hit the block, make it hot, shake him down, we go at it till about four or five o'clock, warfare, got my gear, I'm 
prepared for the op. And we talking how we walk it. Yeah, this is how we rock. So All right. Don't let the cold weather freeze your style. Shop now at OriginalRoyalty.com for all your winter needs. Approved. Yeah, go ahead. Next video. Ignite your celebration with the new Women's Feast Day garments in emerald green featuring a custom gold embroidered menorah. Let your light shine represent your heritage and unparalleled beauty. Order now and stand out among the nations. Seek your camp leader for details. Next ad. This is IUIC Oceana. Follow and subscribe on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Next video. Chapter 11 and verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Paphros and from Cush and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. Australia is one of the islands of the sea. And you have many other islands near Australia. For example, you have Vanuatu, you have Papua New Guinea, you have the Solomon Islands. All of these are islands of the sea, places where the Israelites in the last days will be scattered. Why? Because they are suffering God's judgment because they broke his commandments. Right, there are thousands of people watching class right now. We need to get IUIC Oceana to 1,000 subscribers That's on right. YouTube to help reach the, the, the diaspora of Australia, Papua, New Guinea, and many more islands. So yeah. everybody, take out your phones right now. Go to, go to YouTube, IUIC Oceana, and subscribe, all right? It only takes a few seconds. You can do it while you're watching the uh, announcements. Next video. Hey, Shalom family, Most High Christ bless you. So the Timothy, IUIC, Japan, Brick and Ground, and Goomer Prefecture. That's right, we found the tribe of Asher and some Manasseh established in the town called Brazil Town, where we saw a lot of our brothers and sisters with stores, restaurants, and personal businesses. Even all of the signs were in Portuguese. We passed out a lot of flies. They were very receptive. Hey, we're not going to stop until we find every one of our brothers and sisters out here in Japan. Twelve tribes worldwide. All praises, all praises. IUIC Japan broke ground in Gunma, Japan, in That's Japan's right. Brazil town to wake up the tribe of Asha. IUIC Japan continues the mission to wake up the 12 tribes scattered across the Far East. Subscribe to IUIC Diaspora and IUIC Japan YouTube channels right now. All right, break out your phones. Let's do it. IUIC Japan and IUIC Diaspora. Hey, Shalom family, Most High Christ. Next video. On the surface level, it looks like it's a vacation area. Dig a little deeper, you'll actually find that there's some dark history. Before they had us as products, today they still have us as products. How did you all gain your independence, and from whom did you gain the permission to call yourselves free today? It was from your oppressor. God gave us his Bible. God gave us his laws in order to govern our lives. Our people on this land don't know that they are slaves. The truth that you are the Israelites will make you free as a people. Do you know this whole land it belong to you? And you in the bottom? They taking this land right now and selling it to everybody except for your people.
Most High Christ Bless, Captain Tazawan here. I got Captain Lemuel with me as well. Listen, we are at the U.S. Virgin Islands. That's right. Christ said to himself in the last days, go ye out and teach all nations that they are the Israelites, all right? So our people are scattered abroad on the face of the earth. We're going to be able to teach our people, thus saith the Lord. We must keep God's commandments. We must make sure that we know that we're the Israelites and the faith of Christ, all right? With that, Israel, I'm going to say shalom. All praises, all praises. Shout out to Captain Tazawan, IUIC breaking ground in U.S. Virgin Islands. Warren, Warren for the souls of our people. The time That's has come right. to wake up and turn back to your God. Yeah, Captain Subscribe. Emmanuel, uh, the other captain was there too. Yeah. Captain Lemuel as well. Shout out to Captain Lemuel as well. It says subscribe today to IUIC USVI on all social media platforms. All praises. Next up. We got The Curse of Miriam is coming to theaters soon. Visit royaltyfilms.com and support by clicking the donate button at the top right. Next up, we got Little Lights Casting Call. Please reach out to your local IT lead for the link to sign up. Next up. Witness the prophets of God in their journey through Liberia, building God's heritage. Available now exclusively on IUIC TV. <laughs> Next up, we got coming soon the debut album from Bishop Kanai, Journey to Freedom. That's right. Featuring Zai, 12, Royalty Duo, and more of your favorite artists. Available February 2024. Play that real quick. Hey, uh, somebody called in. We need you to cover this overtime. Uh, you got a few more hours you can cover? We'll pay you double. Uh, no, I can't. I got other obligations. See, the sun is about to set. But, but your obligation should be this company. You should have, you know, you, this should come first, right? Listen, I gave you a 40, and if you need overtime on Christmas and so-called New Year's, you got me. But it's Friday evening, and I got to go. I got to go. I'm not standing Us going out to teach, and then the video's going out. We reach the world now with the gospel. But the music um, is as impactful as being righteous music. There's also sealing instruction in their head. All praises. Shout out to Bishop Kanai. All right, we also got premiering tonight on Original Royalty, the second video release, Check My ID. From Naraya Judah from highly per anticipated debut studio album Fear No Evil. Available on Original Royalty, all digital stores, and streaming sites. Okay, play that a little bit. Yeah, hey, skin black like Jesus, ordained as a fetus, prophesying to the most high, told the truth when most lie, keep a Bible real close by and I let it bang like golden eye, that's 007, all my bros going to heaven, getting ready for the wedding, Revelation chapter 19, light shining like high beams, make you squint like Chinese, wish the devil would try me, got so many angels by me, scriptures flowing through my IV, I'm an Israelite, check my ID. Check my ID and my passport, it's high speed on my dashboard, you wanna find me, I'm moving fast forward, cause behind me is a crash course. Who, who am I, from the Judah tribe, for the 12 tribes, did do or die, whole cap, you a hater, we the real Jews, you faker, when Christ come, he gon' chase you, or a night bombs, then bake you, if Christ don't chase you, the bombs to bake you, the Savior's gonna enslave you, yeah. We saving you for our succession. All praises for the blessings. Bonk out, gonna be our possession. Ha ha. I hope his heels hurt from the field work. And his overseer be a real jerk. His bones now is a field third. Now all nations gonna live curse. After Israel is revealed first. Check my ID, I ain't playing. All nations gonna reveal earth. Yeah, we on every block in the nation. I'm a real Israelite, ain't no faking. You can see that it's written, it's blatant. Check my identification. I walk in my faith, I'm mistaken. I ain't like that old name, so I changed it. I'm seeing their faces, they hate it. Whoa, whoa. 
back on it. Bet you we put in the facts on all it. Praises, all praises, all praises, all praises. Shout out to Officer Narayan Judah. Show the album cover, Fear No Evil, all praises. Uh, new Original Royalty Recordings Artist Merchandise available at OriginalRoyalty.com All praises That ends the announcements Excellent class um, Also, uh, congregation, I didn't have a chance To apologize about what happened on New Year's Day uh, Like Bishop brought out um, As captains Even uh, It's our position to When you see something, to speak up as well and I didn't do that, you know, we didn't do that. So that's our apologies. We're learning to be better leaders. Bishop class cut. All right, so our apologies. Yeah, I'd like to apologize as well. <clears throat> it's unbecoming of captains. We allowed that to happen. Lord's will doesn't happen again. All right. Everybody got bread and wine? Everybody got bread and wine? For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as off as ye drink in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you. Amen. I don't know if this bread is undone or it's just the way it's supposed to be done. I don't know. I got to be honest. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Let's give the Lord a round of applause for another Papaya class and the leadership. Let's rise. Let's rise. Let's rise, Israel. Let's rise on our feet. Men of Israel, are you ready? Always ready. Are you ready? Always ready? What time is it? Time. What time is it? Time. Who's the king? Christ. Who's the king? Christ. What color is he? Black. What color is he? Black. Who are we? Israelite. Who are we? Israelite. Twelve tribes. Worldwide. Twelve tribes. Worldwide. Unity. 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 Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Now finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His what? His what? His what? His what? His what? All praises, all praises, all praises.